Starting. We are live. I see live. We're live. Argosenzone.com post game chat. Bill Jimmy Jr. Myself and hopefully some other people, maybe. Um, so Jimmy, <laughs> so Jimmy, tell us about that new decor behind you there. Yeah, do you, do you like the new blanket? I love it. Yeah. So uh, you got that where? Oh, at the last Argos game. I, I got a little tipsy and signed up for another credit card. Good, good. Oh, right. So that's what happens when I don't go to the games. You have to console yourself with uh, overpriced beverages. Not, see, now you're understanding, right? This is, this is how this works. I hear you. So um, I didn't see, actually, I didn't even see that game on TV, I don't think. How was it? I mean, I know that they were, I know that there's a play near the end. Uh, didn't BC th score a couple near the end of the game or something? They did. Uh, yeah, for anybody watching the recap posted on ArgosEnzone.com this week, there was discussion about how the Argos kept it close and actually had the lead at one point late in the third. I think it was early fourth, and then the wheels started to fall off. Uh, I, I think it might have been a little bit of that fatigue as it was the second game in five days. And, and to be honest, I missed the last BC play because there was a couple of cheerleaders sitting in our section that uh, I was <laughs> chatting with. This. So, uh, who, took, was, who took that photo, by the way? Oh, um, a guy I went to high school with, uh, Mark Johnson. First to Argos game, he came down with the entire family, popped by, say hi. I don't know how he found me. I don't know where he, how he knows where I sit. But he, So, like, okay. But obviously you knew he was taking the photo. Well, I did. It appears you did, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Of course, yeah, that's, that's what I do. Okay. Um, okay, this game. Uh, my first word, if I had to give one word, is like just complete inconsistency by the Argos. It was definitely an up and down game, wasn't it? It was. Well, I'll tell two halves again. Uh, the first half was oh, ugly, so ugly. Uh, but third quarter was was a really interesting watching the turnaround that way. So, I mean, credit where it's due. Uh, did you see the shot of keeping with the whiteboard on the sidelines uh, before the third quarter started? No, I missed that. There was a great shot of uh, their all-Canadian center, uh, the outstanding lineman in the east, Jeff Keeping, their center, was sitting there with the whiteboard, and he had uh, the offensive line co uh, coach Chu on one side of him, and I can't remember who was on the other side, but he was actually just drawing out the X's and the O's trying to figure out better coverage schemes. Or sorry, right. better protection schemes for keeping Ray upright, and I think you really saw that play a factor in the second half for them to get back into the game and make this a little bit closer. Yeah, like at the start of the game, I'm like, "Geez, the Argos D looks wicked." They're like going, and then all of a sudden, there's just big gaps where uh, where Ebden scores like two TDs, where Buddy's like running like I don't know how many yards, just like just like finds a hole and he just takes off, and then uh, yeah, and then it just sort of falls apart after that, and then all of a sudden they they come with this big comeback, maybe like what, like midway through the third or something. Uh, pretty much the third quarter was all Argos. I mean, the, the touchdowns weren't coming, but they were scoring on possessions and forcing a lot of two and outs. And then, and then they kept trying to do these little plays to Owens, and that whole thing was falling apart. That totally didn't work. I don't know. Yeah, well, and that's the, the one downside. I mean, trying to get somebody that talented the ball is you can become pretty predictable. Yeah. And I, get, I still say that's a factor with Chris Jones being part of the coaching staff for as long as he was. Because he sees this guy, these guys in on practice, in practice every day on the offense. So if he's not scheming for them, knowing they got the same offensive coordinator, then he's a fool. So you know that he was working on stuff that he knew was going to get under their skin. And the first half really proved that he was yeah, that everything was working fine. But again, kudos to the Argos coaching staff for making those adjustments at halftime. The yep. second half was a totally different story. True. True. Um, are you uh, pro Ricky Ray running or uh, don't get injured, Ricky Ray? Ricky Ray. You know, if if it wins games, you know, if it keeps possession, if it moves the chains, I'm all for Ricky Ray running. And he he's not graceful, but he's elusive. It's I mean, he took he took the one big hit where he didn't go for that hook slide as early as I thought he probably should have. Right. But for the most part, he doesn't take big hits when he carry when he carries the ball. So I'm totally okay if it, if it moves the chains. So I don't know. Like, I don't know if I've just not been paying attention, but I don't recall Ray really running that much at all previously with the Argos, but this, this season I, I'm seeing it a lot more. It's almost as if <laughs> maybe it's due to it's like he literally has no options, and he's like, well, I might as well do something. Sure. Yeah, I, I think he's just, he's, again, it's that path of least resistance. 
If you're running that many screens to the flats, you're pulling a lot of defenders out of the middle. So if neither of those guys are open in the flats, that means there's a big gap in the middle that maybe he's just taking advantage of and that it's better that than trying to force a ball to the sidelines. Right. Well, anyways, I'm a fan. I like when he does it. I think, you know, and I think if, if people realize that that's an option, that, you know, that's something that he intends to do, then hopefully it allows for a little bit more guesswork when, when people are facing them, right? So. Yeah, I, I think we saw that in the second half here too as Curtis Steele found some more holes too. Yeah. Uh, gee, Steele, man, he's been good for... What, the last three games at least? You're totally noticeable. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's rem- is it just me or does that remind you a bit of Chad Cackard? Like a guy that doesn't maybe get the ink, but just he finds holes, he picks up blocks, and contributes when he needs to. Yeah. Oh, jeez, Cackard. <sighs> yeah, I know. I know. Miss him. Miss him. But I like this. Steel's kind of picking up some of that, right? Yeah. I, 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 mean, I don't think I, he's I, quite. I, I don't know if he's quite a, like Cacker status yet, but uh, I mean he's doing well. I think we can all agree Steele's got better hair. <laughs> this is true. So, uh, <laughs> and speaking about good hair, Juby, who else do you like who has good hair on the team? <laughs> what? Oh, well, I mean, if you're talking hair on the Argos, you're talking about Mike Bradwell, right? That's well, that's where I was going. Yeah, yeah. sickest flow, bro. Yeah. That guy's got nothing going for him. <laughs> I just want yeah. I just want to point that out there. Like honestly, if you're Bradwell, like you might as well just give up because it's not working. Nothing is working. Yeah, okay. So here's a quick here's a quick recap on how to win at life. <laughs> right? so you graduate That's, from McMaster. Yeah. Uh, you become a you become a, a civil engineer? Yeah, uh, yeah, something. Yeah, I don't know which one. Play a pro sport. And have Aaliyah Jasmine Savani on your arm. That's all right. Reverse that order. Reverse that <laughs> order. Man. And then pick up a couple of modeling gigs on the side. See? Yeah, it's it's crazy. But he did drop. Uh, okay, uh, Bradwell on returning punts, like. Okay, I'm not, I mean, uh, other than that last play at the end, actually, where he did drop it. But other than that, at least he, like, hangs under the ball and gets, you know, five yards. Um, but is there literally nobody else to do this? Like, I'm not saying he's doing a shit job. I'm just saying, like, you know. I mean, we're used to having guys down there who can really go with it. And now it seems like we just have a guy, you know, who, who won't drop it. Am I being overly uh, critical? <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't say overly critical. I, I maybe we're just spoiled. Yeah. We're, you know, when you when you got Chad Owens doing that for a couple of years, you kind of have high expectation. Excuse me, high expectations. Brad, Bradwell is consistent. He's not. I was about to say he's not going to drop the ball, but he did fumble one earlier today on, right. on, a, on a punt. But as a rule, he's going to grab it. He's going to hang on to it. And then any yardage after that's gravy. Like any off, any special teams guy is going to tell you just hang on to the ball. That's that's all we need you to do is hang on to the ball. This is why the fair catch exists in the NFL. It's <laughs> just you know, you know, just do this. Okay, I'll go off this, go up, go, and now we'll we'll get the offense out there. Uh, but I mean, that's what he's been doing for his career, especially being on, on those underneath routes where he goes into the traffic, he hangs onto the ball, doesn't take the big hit. Not that he's avoiding the big hit, but he's again a guy that's tough to get a good lick on. So right. then, yeah, the same idea from punting, right? If if you make one guy miss, then it's everything after that's gravy. Um, let's go into fair catch because you brought it up, Juby, and you know I love the fair catch. You know, I I think it's a beautiful way to finish off a a kick. Um, <laughs> I don't know the history. I don't know the history of the fair catch in the NFL. I have no idea. I'm assuming it was something that was put in relatively recently. Am I wrong? I couldn't tell you when it was put in. Uh, I do know it was a safety thing because right. because they didn't have the, the five-yard rule that the CFL does as well. So anybody that was trying to receive a punt was just getting cleaned out by these gunners sprinting down the sidelines uh, because you're looking up like this and just getting a face mask in the throat before the ball even gets there. So that, I know that's why it's there. It's It really is a safety thing. But I think the five-yard rule does a great job of solving that and still bringing some excitement to the game. 
Well, okay, so that's my thing. So I'm assuming the CFL had their rule well before the NFL had to figure out how to guys not to get creamed. So why would they just not look up north and say, look, actually this rule works, so why don't we go with that? As opposed to a play that is completely just a crap play. It's just like there's just almost no point, you know? Sure. I I don't have a good answer for you on that. Uh, you know, I guess I, you know, my first thing is, that, oh, well, it's the NFL. And they're, you know, you know, wasn't their idea first or can't be good uh, would be the first thing that comes to mind. But I don't know. And if you're, okay, if you're a returner, if you're a pun returner, um, you must relish that rule. Like, it, it's the, it, it, you, must, you must be a guy who, like, you just love getting that ball and getting a chance to go through, like, a gazillion guys and, <laughs> and taking it all the way. And then you're basically now put in a position where, like, what, 80% of your catches are going to be like this? Or am I wrong? No, that's, that's exactly what it is. There's guys that got drafted because of their ability to return the ball and were electrifying in college that just have that opportunity taken away from them for the most part. And now as the punters get better and better with their distance, more importantly their hang time, giving the opportunity for guys to get down there in coverage, you take away that opportunity of the big play. It's, it's a really boring style of football. There's got to be other NFL fans that realize that now. Well, I mean, if that's what they grew up with, they don't know anything else. Right. You know, until until they actually turn into what ESPN eight the Ocho and catch a CFL game, they're not really they would have no idea what's going on. But I got a hunch they'd enjoy it. Didn't they have at least one or two games last year on the main network? I thought they did. I, I'm gonna go on a limb and say the Grey Cup. Uh, oh yeah, that one for sure. Yeah, but they okay they had a bunch on two at least, right? I think so. Yeah, uh, I mean, like how many channels they got? I don't know. I guess they can't throw stones. TSN is about to go to five. Well. I'm actually kind of happy they're going to five because they did pick up uh, another season of uh, we're actually taking Argo's end zone after dark. We're moving it from uh, YouTube and we're moving it on to TSM five. So that's just a bit of an announcement. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, you know, I was going to wait for the official press release, but I just, I'll say it now for nobody who's watching, tuning into this uh, Argo's end zone after dark will be on TSN five. Uh, I believe, uh, well, whenever the station's getting launched, we're going to be on there uh, like 1 a.m., uh, it's going to be great, and uh, I'm just looking forward to more exposure that we're going to get because it is really quality programming. That's all i got to say. Hello, post-bar rush. <laughs> get that street beat into you. Enjoy a little after dark. I hear you, buddy. Hey, does the uh, – what's that place called? Do they still have that rat place? Not a rat place, but that PETA place, downtown Peterborough? You know, at first I thought you said R-A-T, rat. Like, do they have that rat place? And I was going to ask you to narrow that down. But, no, yeah, because the pita pit still exists in downtown Peterborough. That was some good eats, the pita pit. Damn straight. I think they're a chain. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I don't, I don't know of any, I don't know anyone, any down here, downtown here, though. Uh, right. But, yeah, I think they hit up the college towns and stuff. Just curious. Um, okay. What else we got? It, Owens, how bad is his injury? I didn't see uh, my, uh, my illegal feed was going all fidgety when he, uh, when he went down. So what's the, do we know the status on that or anything? Uh, he walked off under his own power. They had him iced up. Uh, didn't return to the game. Tough to say. I mean, it looked like it could be anywhere from hip, knee, angle to gonads. I mean, it was just a it was a nasty hit that kind of came in really low. I never understand why they come in that or, Let me start again. I know why they come in low because it keeps the defender safer and you're almost guaranteed a tackle by taking out a guy's legs. But when the guy, what do they list Owens at? 5'9", five, 5'10"? Five, That's what they list him at. And you got this guy coming in that low to hit him in the hip and, and flip him upside down? That always confuses the heck out of me. But anyways, yeah, when I first saw it, I mean, all I could think of was, like, that's how you can dislocate a hip, was a hit like that. So I really didn't, I really couldn't tell where the issue was. All, again, all I know is he got off under his own power, but the guy's tough as nails. I mean, he could be dragging a separated shoulder and still walk off the field on his own. Uh, fingers crossed that he's he's healthy for next weekend. Who um who do we who do we have else that uh, we're waiting to get back? Andre Dury. Okay, yeah. I'm trying to think after that. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, after that. Uh, now Anthony Coombs, I think, is still on the sixth game. I don't think they've deactivated him for the season. I don't think. Okay. So I think Coombs is still kind of in limbo. Uh, Steve Slayton missed his second straight game and as a as running back, too. So there's a guy that, when given the chance, has excelled. It just got to stay healthy. Right. Because, I mean, how, how, cool, how cool is it to have Slayton and Steele running back-to-back? 
JB, I'd say that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> more, more of this, more of this great banter on our Zen Zone after guys. dark. I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds. I'm just gonna tweet at some of these Argos fans. See if we can get somebody in here. Okay, yeah, do it, do it. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Hold on, let me. Uh, I haven't looked at my feed here in a second. Wait up, wait up. I think the link I sent was correct. It should be. Yeah. Oh, geez, I didn't even try that. I just went through the email link. But I think you uh, you had to have a Google Plus account, right, to get in, I think. Yes. Yeah, see, so I think a lot of people don't. Well, if they have a, if they have a Gmail account, maybe, but. Anyways, I don't think um, you set up Google Plus when you've got a Gmail, right? Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't know. They keep changing it, dude. Google's a mess. They yeah. keep changing everything. They just got and they make no money. What an unprofitable, <laughs> shitty company. Jeez. But this, but this is cool. I was playing with this last night, and uh, it's very cool. Like you literally just go into. Uh, I had to enable like live broadcast within our YouTube settings. Sure. And then uh, I think right below, like, the video thing on the sidebar, then there's, like, live events, and you just, like, basically start a live event. It's pretty good. It's not bad. Okay. And so I think is, we get... this, is this broadcasting live on YouTube right now? Yeah, I believe so. So if you dial up our, our YouTube page, I think it has a little, like, uh, a little logo, a little symbol that says, uh, like, live broadcast, like, right now. So actually, I think it's possible that people will be watching us, but they're just not in here, like, participating, right? So, so the YouTube channel could be filling up with comments, just not people wanting to get in on this. Oh, actually, you know what? Uh, the little thing at the bottom here says zero viewers, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a test run, buddy. It's a test run. Well, sure. Oh, yeah. look, yeah. Well, we, it's got the little well, we, uh, red dot next to the live now. There you go. See? Oh, oh, are you on our channel thing? Yeah. I just I just clicked on it just gonna see what was showing up here and yeah, yeah, yeah. live now yeah so uh, anyways hey I got 11 views for this week's this week's preview oh jeez sorry <laughs> it's good stuff no I, I'm just frustrated because it's good stuff I know you put a lot of time into it it's like I think it's actually good stuff like I don't know and I like how you do the recap too so like people missed the game before they didn't see it or they weren't at the game or whatever and they get caught up but whatever yeah. Always asking for comments, and since I'm getting none, I'm guessing, hey, everything's going great. Hey, Swayze didn't get injured or whatever. Weren't you, uh, wasn't that your test? Yes. Yeah. This is true. Good point. So, yeah, I'll be picking no tie cats this week. <laughs> um, uh, okay, Swayze, like, he's hitting everything. Yeah, the guy's automatic, right? It's, yeah. I think three of them are from 40 plus this, this week. It's just his nails. He just gets, he just gets it done. That's and that's a great advantage to have. That you know you're getting points. You can get inside the forty. You're gar- you're getting three points at least. Who was it? Uh, like a year or two ago, where like he was completing because they said was it pre? I think it might have been pre. It might have been. Yeah, might have been when he was fighting that hip hips that, that hip thing. Yeah, I think he was at like thirty percent. Like seriously, it was. <laughs> it wasn't yeah, good. It, 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 wasn't. it was awkward. What yeah. did they do for him at the game on uh, Sunday? Uh, video tribute, uh, gave him a jersey. Didn't retire the number, but they gave him a jersey. Uh, tribute. There's a bunch of his, bunch of former teammates out there too. Uh, okay. I, I, Belly was there. I think Ivan was there. Okay. Uh, shoot. And there was no Noel Noel from the uh, end zone. There was not. At least I didn't hear one. Wasn't that a double zero thing? Wasn't there that their deal? It was. Yeah. So now. So do they still ex- Do they still exist? Point? Yeah, now I'm a little disappointed. Yeah. I don't know. Um, how was the crowd? 18,000 last game. Uh, it wasn't bad. I, I, numbers weren't, weren't bad. wasn't as loud as Winnipeg. Oh, right, okay. Which was a similar size crowd. Yeah, yeah, the, the Winnipeg game was definitely louder. Now, I mean, you might be able to factor it in with the performance on the field, too. Right, true, true. Um... Yeah, the Winnipeg game was a good one. Mm-hmm. It was a good, good offense. So, um, I read somewhere just on Twitter, I actually didn't look into it, but they were talking about something about if the Argos and or CFL somehow feel some sort of 
money gap that that will have a better chance of securing them at BMO, something like that? Uh, I know okay. there's... Uh, yeah, I couldn't say for sure. I know that there's work in place. I saw an interview with Mark Cohan saying that there's there's still work to be done there. But, I mean, he's... It doesn't sound like it's a dead issue. It's... But I think... I think what hurt them was... Was it the federal or provincial government that wouldn't come to the dance on the renovation? Oh, okay. Hmm. When, when that original pitch went forward, there was, one of the levels government uh, decided they weren't interested in funding it. Well, I hate to say it, but... Like, I don't think government should be involved in any of that stuff, but uh, that, that's just my little thing. <laughs> um, but the problem, the thing is, is that usually we're talking about organizations that make a ton of money and, like, private owners that are worth a mint. And obviously with the Argos, um, <laughs> they probably lost money for the last, I don't know how many years, if it wasn't for Grey Cup, right? Yeah. Yeah, like, let's, there was one report that they lost, like, $5 million last year. Yeah, it's, that's a lot. So, okay, Braley's owned it for what? Two, two plus years? It's been longer than that, hasn't it? Yeah, maybe. And it was uh, those two, it was uh, what, Cinnamon and whoever. Before that, I think. Yeah. Um, but I mean, Braley's probably lost, well, so you're telling me that Braley's probably lost like 10 plus million dollars on the Argos? Potentially. Or did he, he had a Grey Cup though, right? So maybe the Grey Cup gave him a bit of... Drip, drip. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming the club, the, whole, the host club, gets some of those revenues, not just not just the the stadium. Marco on uh, leaving the CFL. Thoughts, Juber? First thing is that sucks, because because yeah. he, he did he did some really big things and was one of the more approachable commissioners I can think of of any pro sport. I mean, we we've, we've seen him walk around the stands at at the Rogers Center. There's tons of pictures of him with just casual fans. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I can't imagine Bud Selig sitting down having a pint with anybody at a Brewers game. That wasn't happening to be sitting next to him in his own private box. True, but in fairness, the CFL is a different league too. CFL is that kind of league, right? Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah. yeah. But I uh, his his demeanor always was a very. I don't know if casual is the word I want to use because that almost sounds like it's not it's unprofessional. But he seemed very approachable. It, it never seemed like a guy that, oh, geez, there goes the commissioner. Don't make eye contact. I, I'm sure that Roger Goodell walking through your college just kind of like, turn your face to the wall just in case. But he just seemed very approachable. I, right. I wasn't crazy with how public he made the labor dispute. That kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But I mean, beyond that, everything else he seemed to touch turned to gold. So people were listing all of his accomplishments and all the things that the league has done the last what? However many years? Seven. Seven, under his, under his tenure. So uh, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Would those things have happened regardless? Was it just, you know, a good time for the CFL, or is this really Kohan doing a lot of, you know, uh, connecting a lot of things and getting a lot of people to talk to each other and, and a lot of things sort of happening? Or, like, basically, like, you know, if it was somebody else who was also the commissioner, did he just come in at a time when, uh, you know, things are going well for the CFL and, you know, he just sort of was there at the right time? Yeah, fair fair point. I, I think that you've got to give him credit for the for the TSN contract. I, I would assume that if he wasn't in charge of that negotiation, played a very large role in negotiating on behalf negotiating on behalf of the league. There's what was it, four stadiums renovated or built under his tenure, with the with the fifth being Saskatchewan. So you've got more than oh, half. Oh, breaking, breaking news, Juby, we have one viewer. Breaking news, we have one viewer. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Hello, whoever you are. Hello out there. <laughs> yeah, don't leave. <laughs> okay, sorry, Jube, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> oh, we just went down to zero. <laughs> yeah, see what you did? Did not, did not like, oh, I scared him, scared him away. Scared him oh, away, call, oh, Juber, I'm sorry, hard. buddy. I scared him away. All right, so, uh, sorry, uh, you were talking about stadiums and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, I... I think that the the stadiums that's that's kind of a, a coin flip as every team kind of negotiated individually, I'm sure. But touchdown Atlantic would have to, I would assume, would be his baby. Yeah. Uh, the the Ottawa Red Blacks, sorry, Red Blacks, coming back into the league. I, I mean, that was under his tenure, so he he seemed to have a very 
very guarded view about bringing in expansion teams, not just for the sake of expanding, but want to make sure it was a strong financial base behind any bids, so that you don't just it wasn't like the um, like the Gleiberman situation <laughs> in Ottawa. So I mean, yeah, I give credit for that, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see who who takes up the reins. Well. Um... Well, you probably heard that. The big news in Toronto is uh, one of our mayoral candidates <laughs> has decided she would <laughs> she would like to be the commissioner of the CFL. And I'm not saying I just never connected her with football before. That's all I'm going to say. Sure. Anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah, no idea. Yeah. So, hey, how you doing? Um, so, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's tough to say. Like, a uh, part of me thinks that he came in um, when, uh, you know, when times were good. I'm not saying he, just, he did a shitty job. I'm just saying, I think the timing was was positive timing. Mm. But you're right. I mean, we have no idea, like behind the scenes, like you know, what was. Um, Buzzer is very important. Yes. Oh, buddy, you mm. know it, man. I need credit cards. You need credit cards. No, I'm need credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's great. Yes. So, how, so what did you think about the game tonight, Batu? I'm interested in just only NBA. Sorry, Isabel. <laughs> You're not interested in the CFL? Yes. By the way, LeBron James come back, Cleveland. Do you know? Uh yeah, I heard. I heard that. Yeah. A little bit off topic, but we did we did hear that. That is true. What's what's your favorite team? What's your favorite team? Uh, yes. a team called the Toronto Argonauts. Oh really? Yeah. You like Ooh, them or what? Hey. He 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 could really challenge Bradwell for the flow. <laughs> He, where was he? He's like in the Middle East or something. You see the background there? That was crazy. Yeah. It was... Seriously, like he was... <laughs> well, I, I knew it was dark. I couldn't quite tell what was going on, and I couldn't place his accent. Did he say you wanted credit cards? That's what I heard at first. Yeah. I heard I want credit cards. And then, and then he wanted to know if we heard if LeBron James has come back to Cleveland. <laughs> Good. <laughs> This is good. We need we need kind of like random content like this. It's good stuff. It, it is in fact August 2014. So yes, he is coming back to Cleveland. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah. So that's awesome. Anyways. So uh, I'll have an open channel. It'll be fun. <laughs> okay. This is good. <laughs> next time we're gonna next time we're gonna do more promotion. We need more random bits coming in. That's part of our thing. We should have found about, out how he found us. Hey, how about if we, if I can get a hold of Batu, how about we get him in on uh, Argo's End Zone after dark? You know he's got good places to check out. For sure. He could he, be our like he could be our like Middle Eastern correspondent for Argo's End Zone after dark. That hair is not by accident. I guarantee you, he knows where the party's at. <laughs> Do you think we could bring in Bradwell on once on like a split screen between Bradwell and Batu? What do you think? It'd be like looking in a mirror, wouldn't it? People would accuse us of just, you know, having some type of a camera trick. Like, oh, he recorded that earlier. Uh, you're right, Chibi. You're right. Um, anyways, so have they have they mentioned I'm anyone gonna, who? Uh, I'm gonna refer to Batu as Middle Eastern Bradwell from now on. What's that? I'm gonna refer to him as Middle Eastern Bradwell from now on. Nice. <laughs> um, Man, so. Yours. so is there anyone? Are they talking about anyone who's going to take who uh, has potentially the inside track on taking over the uh, CFL gig? I haven't heard a peep that anything I've seen or heard, anyways. Uh, the first one to even mention it was what's her name, Spitz? No idea. The one that was going to run for mayor in Toronto. Oh, Spitz. Yeah, that's who I was talking about. Yeah. Spitz. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Spitz would be the sunflower seed company. <laughs> and oddly, she used the sunflower seed, I believe, as the uh, the logo for her campaign. No joke. But anyways, 
<laughs> it's true. No, it is. It's true. You think I'm bullshitting? Anyway. Yes, I do think you're bullshitting. No, dude. I swear it's a flower. I swear it might be. I'm pretty sure it's a sunflower. Oh, I never sunflower, made the. Sunflower. I never made the connection though, huh? All right, not sunflower seed, but sunflower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um. Okay. I'm gonna go on my rant about TSN. Obviously. Okay, copy. Was yeah. Well, it won't, it won't be a complete rant. But, okay, so I, I'm divided on the TSN because I really do believe that TSN has helped the CFL become what has become because it made it like a premier product. It gave them better production values. It gave them better time slots. It, gave, it made them like, you know, it was, it, it was big shit, right? Whereas I think like even on, let's say, CBC or CT, uh, you know, CTV, if they ever did, I don't even know if they did. Like, I think it was a bit of an afterthought. And also, like I said, the, the added production values. You've got like the panel, which I find fairly entertaining. I mean, it, I'm not saying it's the best, but it's, it's, it's pretty good. I think they do a decent job, I guess, minus <clears throat> a couple of guys on the broadcast crew. But, um, you know, I think they do a great job, and I think that they're part of the reason... I think they're part of the reason that, like, the CFL has kind of grown um, as much as it has, right? And kind of got it... and got it, got it, the league to a point where, like, every Grey Cup, like, they're not spending, like, an hour talking about all the problems of the Grey Cup... or, sorry, all the problems of the CFL. They're talking about, like, expansion. They're talking about all the great things that are going... Like, think about, like, when we were younger, and it's like, I swear, like, every Grey Cup day, they'd spend, like, two hours just talking about all the things that are wrong with the league, right? And, and you, don't, you don't really hear that anymore, right? So, and I think a lot of that had to do with TSN and TSN giving that exposure and giving it the increased, like, production values and all that kind of stuff. Now, my beef is, because, you know, I'm a notorious cable cutter, is that I have to watch some crappy online feed to try and watch the games, the away games. Um, and I don't know why. They don't just have, like, a... Like a uh, like a like a stream that I'll pay them like I don't know what fifty bucks a year or something and like I can watch all the CFL games like streamed like like and and I watch the commercials and everything so you, you, they still get their commercial revenue and everything like I I just don't understand why that I'm assuming it's a technical issue like I don't know um, but I think they do have streams now but you have to actually like input your uh, your cable deeds to say yeah I actually pay for TSN at home and so now I can watch the feed as well right. But okay. if you don't, then you kind of get you get hung up with that thing. But why not just like have a streaming package and say, I don't know, fifty bucks or more or whatever for the season, or like a hundred bucks for the season? You can watch every CFL game streamed high quality off of your uh, off the website. So especially stuff like Grey Cup. I think Grey Cup being on like a on like a, a cable network, I think is horrendous. Like I just think that's a horrible thing. Like why not pitch pitch that to CTV? Like keep the exact same branding, TSN branding, TSN production values, TSN everything. It's just that you put it on the main network, especially Grey Cup, like so that more people can watch it. Anyways, that's my beef. But like I said, I'm torn because I think they do such a great job and I think they're totally responsible, partially responsible for like the health of the league right now. So, I don't know. No, got anything to add? You got anything to add to that, Juby? That's a legit argument. I, I think they've got to recognize that this media delivery device, can we call it? Yeah. Is becoming increasingly more popular and is replacing television in a lot of homes. And they've got to be able to adapt to that. Like, every broadcast company has got to be able to. And it's not just putting more damn commercials on YouTube videos. Well, and, well, that's the thing, right? I mean, you it, obviously like the percentages haven't totally swayed the other way, but obviously more and more people are cutting the cables and they're they're just living off of like Netflix and like over the air stuff, right? Um, so if that's the case, then you know, TSN or TSN and CFL like have less exposure to their product if you have more cord cutters. Obviously, it's it's happening at a slow rate. Like, I mean, it's not like all of a sudden nobody has cable anymore, but over time, um, like you said, like as if you look at the way things are headed. Um, you know, they're heading away from people, <laughs> they're heading away from more people signing up for cable, from what I know. Um, so, I mean, you got you to gotta have those people have exposure to the league as well, right? So, I guess the situation they're dealing with is that TSN is owned by a cable company. So, they're trying to bring in more people through that medium. And maybe just having people sign up online as part of their cable package isn't quite enough. I'm guessing. I don't fully understand the details, but I would assume, that, especially with them expanding into five channels, that they're trying to get more people signing up to cable. Is it beating a dead horse? Maybe. But that's probably the thought process, that in terms of controlled revenue with the commercials and such, it's, maybe it's easier than trying to go online. So how does TSN expand to five channels if they don't have hockey? They don't, I think they only have like a couple like regional 
uh, like maybe a couple Leaf games and something. Like they only have a couple regional games left, I think. How do they go to five channels when they have no hockey? Well, I, I'm assuming this is an opportunity for them to up, step up a lot with more amateur stuff. So I know that Sportsnet has dropped their coverage of CIS football this season. Maybe that's an opportunity that for TSN to grab a hold of that, make that a Saturday package. Yeah, is maybe, there nobody? Is there nobody doing CIS, CIS right now? Not 100% sure. Growing up, it was on CHCH coming out of Hamilton. And then after that, the score, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but they've now, apparently they've dropped that from from the from the schedule for this year. Maybe TSN picks that up. Maybe TSN spends some more time on some international coverage of some of our national teams that you may not know about. So maybe we'll get more, uh, you know, under-17 men's and women's hockey, uh, you know, uh, more international soccer, you know, filling in the gaps that way. Who knows? Well, Jimmy, I know that if whatever network gets more soccer, that's the one that you will uh, pay more for. I know that. <clears throat> oh, who said soccer? Silly game. Yeah, I got. I like it. I like it better than I used to. But uh, we'll save that for another. We'll save that for next time. Batu comes back on. He might be able to help us out with that. Um, so for <laughs> next broadcast, GB, insight in soccer. So the next broadcast, GB, I expect you to have your credit card handy nearby so that you can give Batu your number. <laughs> <laughs> Only if I get another Argos blanket. Uh, that's right. You got to give him the number. Yeah, give him the number of the new one. That's right, Batu. I'm calling you out. Argos blanket. Make it happen. I'm just so glad we recorded that part with Batu. I'm just, I'm really happy with that. People, people think that we, this is like completely not, you know, planned broadcasting. You know. So uh, how did that happen? I heard, uh, I heard the camera crew was at your place uh, last weekend doing Argos end zone cribs. How did that go? It hasn't been on the air yet, but I know that they're in there filming. How'd it go? They were in here filming. They won't leave. Put oh, still that here. down. That's mine. Close the close the door. Still here. They won't leave. Did you send these guys? Well, buddy, that it's part of our contract, man. I'm sorry, we signed it. You know, the problem, them. obviously, they got to be there for like three weeks because you're not giving enough good content. You got to spice it up a bit. Good. Well, I'm sure that they're gonna enjoy my ALS ice bucket challenge tomorrow morning, right? <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> by the way, uh, I have been challenged. Yeah. By the way, I, I watched the uh, Junior Admiral and Captain Curtis one about three times. Sorry, I thought that was the funniest thing ever. I haven't had a chance to watch that yet. I got caught up in the game before, okay, before yeah. I got home. You got to watch it. It's pretty good because there's no editing whatsoever. So it's all like you, you see it exactly raw the way they did. It's beautiful. Nice. Anyways. And uh, and uh, so uh, Clay comes by and he's like, so uh, so who's who's first? And right away, Travis ditches it to his little brother. He goes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Well, they were probably terrified. Did you see Clay's earlier? Uh, yeah, that was off. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, <laughs> it almost looked painful for him. <laughs> yeah. was, that was a lot colder than he was planning. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? I don't know. Anything else, Juber? Anything else, Argos or uh, whatever? We're not, so we're not in our seats until October, is that right? Yeah, October 4th. Okay. 48 days between home games? Uh, you know what? Okay, so let me rant about the schedule now. So people are bitching about that, but um, let's look at the way our schedule used to be. Like, I, don't, I know there's like, yeah, you got four games in October, and you know, there's a big gap and all this stuff, but... Um, I'd rather have those Saturday afternoon games and those Sunday afternoon games than more like Tuesdays and Wednesdays and all that stuff. And from what I recall, the schedule this year has a lot more like weekend afternoon games than the previous bunch did. So, Yeah, we had no Saturday home games last year. Right, and that to me is like, that, that's my, well, we've talked about that. That's like my favorite game. Like you come into town early by like 11 or noon and we set up shop somewhere for a bit and then... Uh, you know, have some drinks and some grub, and then we go to the game. Like, to me, and we make a whole day of it, right? I mean, to me, that's, like, the perfect time slot. So we got a bunch of those, so I'm not pitching too much. Yeah, actually, the next game is a 4 o'clock game, 4 o'clock, 4.30. Okay, so uh, Elephant and Castle, uh, uh, what, 12? Plus or minus. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming they haven't changed the lock, so we got, we got the key. So 
Uh, I was disappointed with the slum dog last time. Uh, I don't know if I, I can do the slum dog anymore. I was disappointed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, bangers and mash on this end, which which I remember ha enjoying last year. It was it was it was good. Just I got better memories from the last one. So, so it's almost like they renovated the place, but uh, they uh, cheaped out on the chef or something. Yeah, you know, you know, it, it'd be awful, but you know, maybe they, if they clean the fryers, maybe that hurt things. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. We were getting that like twenty years of of fryer goodness that was stored up for twenty years, and now they probably cleaned it or put a new one in, and we're not getting that anymore. Yeah, like uh, you remember that old Mary with Children where Al was having the barbecue. And saying how he never cleans up the barbecue, the ashes of the past for burgers of the future. Uh, what if maybe it's something like that? Maybe it's you know, like you said, two decades worth of flavor there. That's a good point. Yeah. What did you think of? Uh, so we we did our uh, um, we did our pregame. We moved our pregame to the loose moose when the elephant was closed. What was your take on loose moose? I, the I new loose moose, by the way, not the old shitty loose moose from back in the day. Anyways, yeah. I did enjoy the moose. Yeah. Okay. Uh, food was tasty. Great beer selection. Uh, yeah, had a good time. Okay, so maybe okay, so maybe we'll give the elephant another shot, and then if it's uh, whatever, we'll go back to the moose. Uh, but speaking the moose, of the moose has crazy beer, a uh, crazy beer selection. Yeah, but speaking of places to eat, uh, I own Nick and the family a couple pints from this past game, so we're, we're hitting up Shula's Joe's afterwards. Oh, okay, all right, fair enough. So, so you went pre or post last game? Pre. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, it was uh, Boston Pizza. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, we went there a while back. Remember, we were drinking the stock. Yeah, it's not on tap anymore. There. <laughs> they got rid of the stock. Yes. Yeah, but dude, probably no one orders it. Wasn't happy about that, but the pizza burger was fantastic. Pizza burger. Have you not had the pizza burger? No. How does that work? So, what did is it like a burger with pizza toppings? No, it's a burger wrapped in a pizza. Oh, a burger wrapped in a pizza. So, like yeah. the pizza is like the bun. Yes. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's it greasy but so tasty. Okay. Yeah, it's a must have. I wonder if Bad Two's had one of those. <laughs> oh. <laughs> By the way, next before the next uh, post game chat, where I'm going to do a little more heavy uh, promotion. And uh, cause I, I, we need a couple more of those randoms coming in looking for credit card numbers. It's good stuff. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I, I wish we, we should have asked how he found us. Like, was he just surfing YouTube channels, or did he find us on Twitter? I put in I put in a couple tags on the uh, so when I booted up the the event or whatever, I put it in a couple of tags like American football and then Toronto Argos, Edmonton Eskimos, like uh, sports or something like that. So he might have came in via the tags. I have no idea. Yeah, maybe it was American sports that caught him. Yeah, it could be. Um, oh, so uh, those photos that you see online that people were bitching about last week, and I totally agree, are those nameplates on the New Jerseys really that big, or did someone just F up when they uh, designed the, when they took the photos for the uh, the website? Well, I know that the jerseys I saw at the Jay's shop uh, the Ooh. night that they launched them, they, they were like that, and I kind of took a double take, and it's it does not look good in person, as it almost looks like it's just taped on instead of pro-stitched. I I don't know anybody that has ordered one yet to know if that's what's happening with the custom orders. They, what they had was uh, Ray, Owens, and Dury. None of those names are very long, and they were all the full back across the shoulder name ba name bars. So uh, we'll have to see what happens when someone places a, a personal customized order and see if that ch changes out. See, I only wanted Juby on mine, but like, it was still going to come with that big-ass nameplate, so I don't know. Right. Um, yeah. I may check. You know what? Based on the online chatter, they're losing a ton of sales over this, you know? They are? Yeah, like people are saying, I'm never going to buy one. I'm never going to buy a, a jersey with a thing because of the stupid nameplate. Yeah, I was I was looking into it. Uh, Jersey City, where yeah. where I got this one done, and the, the previous one, fantastic customer service. Very happy with their work. They've they've got the jersey there, and it's co it is costing a little bit less than what you would pay at the J shop. Okay. But I haven't contacted them to see what the situation is on the name bars, 
just because I don't have the dollars kicking around right now to invest in invest that jersey. I do. Right. I don't mind the jersey though; it's growing on me. Every time I see it, I like it a little bit more. But I, that'd be the one thing to look into is say, okay, what's the situation with that with that name bar? Even just a trimming, like if it was more angled instead of straight across, you'd still yep. get that detail on the shoulder. Yeah, I mean, all they have to do literally is like just trim the trim the bar before they like stitch it on or whatever. I mean, anyways. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm not an expert in the field, but that doesn't sound terribly difficult from where I'm sitting. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I still, I'm not still not sold on the big ass A on the front. I just something there doesn't sit well with me. But the rest I like. I like the colors. I really like the numbering on the bag. I think it's gorgeous. Um, you know, they're nice. Um, but yeah, I still got to be. And I love, I love the white helmets. I love the stripe, the big stripes on the uh, down the middle. Um, still don't like the A though. That's my only beef. The, the advantage of the A is that if someone wanted to pick up this jersey on the fly at the shop, what have you, with no name or number on the back, it doesn't look yeah. near as plain as any of the other football jerseys because of the big numbers. Like When the numbers are gone, these things look really plain. So now you've got almost like a hockey jersey, something you could wear as a blank jersey anywhere on the street but still get that message out that this is an Argos jersey. Right, true. Um, okay, so we got a, we had a, actually it's funny. I was watching a, a bit of the Ryder game the other day, and um, I hate to say it, but I thought they were amazing. I was like raving about those jerseys when I saw like the the photos of them and stuff. But on TV, man, they just don't look as good on TV. I'm sorry. They, they look they look a little busy. It's a there's a little bit there's a lot going on there. Now, have you seen any of the other ones? Okay, yeah, I was about to get in there. This is my segue, Juby. Jeez, come on. This is a professional broadcast. I know what I'm doing here. Sorry, I, hang on. Let me go through my notes here. Um, <laughs> nope, that's a stamp. Uh, sorry, you were saying. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, so the next ones that came out, I believe, were Ottawa. Am I right on that? Yes. So, uh, again, I got an issue with the big-ass logo on the front. I just don't like it, man. So they got these beautiful, beautiful red jerseys kind of cool helmets and then they got this big logo with this big like white outline on the front and it just uh, to me it just doesn't work I was kind of hoping the jersey would have been the plaid you know like the keen dinner jacket like it yeah. would have maybe even had some buttons down the front okay like let's talk long... about the di- let's talk about the dinner jacket because I've heard a lot of people it seems like um, um, see people I've heard the Keswick dinner jacket I believe Torontonians say that and I've also heard Torontonians say the Peterborough dinner jacket and it sounds like Peterborough Peter wait Peterborians? Peterborites? What is it? Folks from the borough. Right. So the folks from the borough then <laughs> go pass it off. So the folks in the borough go and pass it off to Keene. So it's like you got Toronto and saying the Peterborough dinner jacket. And then the Peterborough, Peterborough cats are just like, we're, we're passing that on to Keene. It's, no, no, no. It's the Keene dinner jacket. Exactly. It probably just goes all the way down. I'm sure Keene says it's the Stuart Hall jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Am I getting a little I don't think I even know where that. I don't even think I know where that is. I think I just went a little inside. I was a little too inside for this nation international audience. Sorry, right. Batu. That's why I'll, I'll explain. We're just going to say next week. We're now we're now an international broadcast with guys like Batu chiming in. They don't know where the hell Stuart Hall is. Yeah, I, yeah. My apologies, Batu. I swear. Look, well, if we can do a screen screen, we'll post Google Maps and I'll show you where Keen is and then Stuart Hall. <laughs> it'll make it'll make sense when you see it. It will. Well, then we'll do some Google Map directions from uh, the Middle East to uh, Stuart Hall. <clears throat> in case he wants to visit. So, okay, yeah. So, if the jerseys had been the whole the whole plot thing, that went wild. I think I would. How great would that be? I just yeah. they like a team of lumberjacks out there. Why didn't they just dress? Why didn't they just dress them up like their mascot? Right. You know, yeah. Even if it was like fit full suspenders. Yeah. What's his name? Joe. Big Joe, I believe. Okay. Um, so yeah, hmm. so I like them. I like them, That's except for thing. again the big ass logo on the front. I got beef with that. I don't know. It doesn't look right for football for me. I don't know. Yeah. And then we got uh, uh, was it Winnipeg next? Yes. Um, yeah. I like them. What? I like them. You know what? Okay, I don't mind because everyone's like, oh, there's no gold. But you know what? They're the blue bombers. But anyways, um, I don't. I don't like how the shoulder pads are like that same like design as like the lid. Right. I think that the lid is okay, like being whatever the hell that is. I don't even know what it is. Like I some like blue camo blue camo or something. Um, I think 
Yeah, digitized as like a digitized marine camo was one of the terms I heard. Oh, um, but I don't like it on the. Uh, I don't like it right here. Like you know, I, I like that right there. But I don't like it right here. I think it looks weird, man. Let's not get on the boat logo conversation right now. <laughs> we'll, save that. we'll have to save that for another seven episodes. And that's probably the only way we're gonna get in people in here to people to chat with us. We're gonna have to get those boat logo like hardcore guys to get in. Like, Look, you want to talk about the boat logo? Yeah, come on in. Yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, so yeah, but I'm a. Fi- I like the Winnipeg one looks real sharp. Now again, maybe that's because of my fondness for the Argos. There was a lot of talk on social media last night. A lot of Twitter guys saying that it, they look like Argos jerseys because it was blue on blue instead of having any of the gold in there. Maybe right. that's why I like it. It almost works like a complement for the Argo signature look. Right, and then and then Calgary have they shown the whole thing yet, or just the, I think I've just seen the lids. Just have the helmet, the as far as I've seen, but the helmet looks sick. I don't know. The angles I saw, I wasn't crazy about it, but I got to look again. I don't know. Well, it's, it's the black matte finish with the black with the black cage. They got the chromed up horse on the side, and then it's like a starburst red on the back. Yeah, it kind of like the, the colors kind of go one into the other, right? Like the, from from blue to black, or vice versa, or something. Red to black. Yeah. Ah, uh, sorry, that would be it. Yes, thank you. Sorry, not red blacks, <laughs> but red to black. Well, it wouldn't even be red blacks. It'd be red blacks. My yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, anyway. Has anybody explained that yet? Uppercase red blacks. Has anyone explained it? Uh, I think it was a marketing thing, just trying to draw more attention to it, have a pop out on a page when you're reading it. <laughs> people would, yeah, because people would be sitting there reading the page on uh, OC Transpo, and they'd be reading about last night's uh, Red Blacks game, and then they, because it was uh, capitalized on the in the newspaper, they'd yell it out while they're sitting there reading it on the bus. Possibly. Now, I've, now that you're mentioning, I'm kind of curious about any French publications. Like, does the sorry. Rouge et Noir have to be all capitalized as well? Well, dude, if they don't, that would be discrimination against the French language. We're a bilingual country, Juby. True. Am I say, is, is, is it Rouge et Noir or is it Rouge Noir? I don't know. Sorry, Buddy. Rouge Noir! <laughs> Buddy, I don't know. Yeah, I did no but research on I that. say oh. put, that on your, put that on your notepad in the next episode of uh, Argo Zen's own postgame. Uh, We'll, we'll attack that right at the get-go, because people want to know. I want to know. Wow. If you want to be selfish about it, Juby, then that's fine, but I, I like to think about the viewers. It's all about me. I like to think about our one viewer right now, so, okay. But last time I talked about the viewers, it went down to zero right away, but wait, hanging out. He's still in there. They're still in there. Is it bad too? That's probably bad too. just try. He probably can't figure out how to get back in, but he just wants to watch. Hey, did you hear LeBron James? Hey, did you, LeBron. hey, did you hear LeBron's coming back to Cleveland? What? Oh, uh, by the way, uh, do you guys have any credit card numbers? <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. When did the Stamps uh, jerseys come out? They play. Do they play tomorrow? Or are they on a bye week? Uh, I think, uh, well, it's BC, uh, it was, yeah. oh, BC Guaranteed Win, we got to talk about that. It's BC yeah. Riders, right? Right. And it was Winnipeg, who last night? Winnipeg Montreal. Montreal. Yeah, Process Elimination, they are, oh no, sorry, they're they're in uh, Ottawa tomorrow. Oh, ah, okay. Calgary's in Ottawa. Okay, so how did this Guaranteed Win thing come out in BC? Was it just basically the owners, like, talking to the media, and he goes, yeah, I guarantee we're going to win? What happened there? Well, it wasn't the owner, because Braley just kind of stays at all this stuff. Oh, so, uh, sorry, it was CEO or something, right? Yeah, CEO, president guy, yeah. Um, basic, now, his justification for it was that the team's played really well at home this year. He feels very, very confident how the team is progressing. And the guaranteed win, again, was that if they lose, the guy, people in attendance will get free tickets at one point over the next four home games. Okay. There's a lot of people pointing to a billboard outside of BC Place. You saw that? Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, so there's a billboard. Uh, it says it's from Ryderville. I don't know if it was fans or what, but it's a it's a billboard of a woman in a Rough Riders jersey saying that green is the new orange. Mm. And that seemed to initiate, that seemed to spark a fire in the BC CEO. That's a lot what's, of it. And what's really the point of those billboards? Like, did, did you ever it's kinda, see? Like, it's Animal kind of a waste. It's, sorry, it's kind of a waste of money. You ever see Animal House? I don't watch movies, Juby. Okay, 
at one point, John Belushi's character, uh, Bluto, is giving out the, the frat names, the pledge names. Yeah. And your name is Pinto. Why Pinto? Why not? That's pretty much the way I look at anything coming out of Ryderville. The game is just, why would you do that? Why not? Yeah. In other words, yeah, well, stop him if you can. Uh, how, ma what, how many people does BC draw at a home game? Any idea? Should I look it up? Yeah, I'll leave that up to you, yeah, because I don't know off the top of my head. I, I know they're, they're drawing better since the renovations. So whether that was an Empire Field influence, bringing them closer to the field, or the excitement of a winning product in the bigger stadium, but they're doing better now than they were before. Okay, hold on. I got it up here. If, uh, give me two seconds. Um, yeah. They're drawing. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, wait. They have the... So the home opener, they draw 24,000. Uh, 25, 25, 24... Uh, yeah. Decent. I mean, it's better than Toronto, but I mean, Tor you take Toronto, how many years ago? We drew that, right? Wasn't 24 it used to be an average crowd in Toronto, and even then people were saying there's not enough people here? 22-24, yeah, but this year they're averaging 17. Argos? Yeah, yeah. All I'm saying is that um, I don't think BC is, like, an amazing number. Like, they're not really, cr they're not really killing it over there. True. But, but it's, yes, not, but it's more than here. From what I've heard on social media, it's better than it was. Okay. But they, but they must make profit, yeah? I would hope so. Because always Braille is really in the hole? True. Maybe, I, maybe that's why he's trying to unload both teams. Is he trying? Oh, I didn't know he's trying to unload BC. I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of people saying that you know he's got other endeavors. I mean, he's a senator, so he's got a lot of stuff going on in Ottawa. Right. So... A lot of people. Some people are saying it's a time situation. Others are saying he's got those other interests that are clearly more profitable. That and are saying, you know, hey, he's done. Ex he's done more than the league could have asked him to do. So it's time for somebody to take some of this burden off him. Okay, this was going around on Twitter. I don't know if you saw that, but there's definitely a couple of people on our feed who uh, cannot stand Braley. One guy individual who I can't remember his username. But anyways, cannot stand Braley. And he just thinks that everything wrong with the Argos is his fault. And he's not putting money into them. And he's not making this BMO thing happen and all this other stuff. And I'm basically like, um, isn't this a guy that's built out like a million teams over the years? And like, just because he gives a shit about the CFL? And so if, they, if that is the case, which I believe it is, you hear all these stories all the time where like, Nobody really said anything, but, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Guess what? Um, he's bailed out, like, five teams in the last, like, 15 years. Um, nobody really is supposed to say anything about it, but he has. And then, you know, and then you go and, like, cut him down because you're saying he's not doing the right stuff for the Argos. I don't know if that's fair. Sure. Um, like, right off the bat, I'm, I'm sure he's, thick, he's got thick enough skin that he's not going to take that personally. But on, on the flip side, I think the situation you're dealing with is if you've got a disengaged ownership – then that will filter down. Right. So, I, you know, as a Toronto sports fan, when, when the Leafs were run for so long by the uh, teacher's pension fund, that's that's a board, that's a faceless body only talking dollars and cents. It's, yep. not, it's not like watching a Detroit Red Wings game and seeing Mike Illich in the owner's box, and he's down there at the bench with the Stanley Cup. I mean, you know, like if the Leafs had won the Stanley Cup during well, the... They would, I'm sure they would have brought in a lot of teachers, buddy, to carry that cup around the ice. That, that's this mental image I got, is that yeah. you know, the yeah. players don't, have, don't get a chance to have the year with the cup. This has got to hit all of the Ontario's high schools. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think my, I think my sister would have got it for a week in Uxbridge, yeah, so... Yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So I think that, like any business, like any corporation or company, uh, that attitude comes from the top down. So if you've got a guy that already owns another team and has got other interests beyond that, then maybe he's not quite as engaged as you'd like him to be. It's, a, it's one other level you've got to try to fight through to get things done that maybe it's taken away a lot of the energy and momentum that the Argos front office could be driving in the city and with their fan base. I'm, I'm oversimplifying the whole scenario, of course. But maybe that's a situation that you're seeing what's happening with Ar with the Argos compared he, to now. I'm talking about the other extreme, of course. But when John Candy was involved, okay. I mean, so when because he owns two teams, doesn't he have to be kind of hands off though? 
That's a fair point, but again, one one more reason that someone else needs to take this off his hands. Yeah, uh, no, no, right, but I'm just talking about people bitching about him that, that he's not doing enough and all this stuff, and I'm, I, I, I just, based on the history we know about what he's done to the league, I just don't think that's fair. Um, and yeah, if he owns two teams, I bet you he has to be fairly hands-off, I bet you he does, and also, even if you are the owner, just hire great people to get it done, like, it doesn't have to be the owner doing a bunch of stuff, I mean, just hire good people, and they should be able to do it, right? You know he's, he was born in Hamilton, right? <laughs> okay, but he wouldn't have bought the team anyways. If it, if it was if there was that much of an issue, he wouldn't have bought them. He would have actually he would have actually liked them to sing to sink into the ground and never be never be revived ever again. If that was the case, right? Well, maybe it's a conspiracy theorist in me. Maybe he wanted to make sure he was the one to put the nail in the coffin. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right, great. Well. The, our Twitter buddies will enjoy that one. I'll watch for it tomorrow. I'll watch for it tomorrow. Our one viewer will spread that around. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <clears throat> so BC Riders guaranteed win. Yeah. Okay. If the okay, so guaranteed win, you get a free ticket if you show up and they lose. If the Argos did that, would it make a difference? No. I agree. Um, based on I say all we the... still I say we still get eighteen thousand, <laughs> and they lose money giving away free seats. <laughs> if we lose. Based, on, based on all the hate I read in the comments section about the uh, Bon Jovi CD burning article on the Toronto Sun, if the Argos ran a promo of "If we lose, you get free tickets," it would just be a full comment after after they actually lost. It'd just be comment after comment of. Of course they lost. They suck. The CFL sucks. Blah, blah. Yeah, but you're reading. First of all, you're reading internet comments, and second of all, you're reading internet comments on the Toronto Sun website. You know, that's kind of yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry, but you're kind of killing yourself twice there. Yeah. Um, it was the first article that came up on a search. By the way, um, the post you did about uh, the Bon Jovi thing, um, I actually, when I, when, I, when I read the snippet, the article, I was thinking the exact same thing, but of course, you know, I didn't write a post because, hey, it's Argo Zanzone presented by, I'm wait, is it Bill Jovi presents Argo Zanzone? But I was thinking the exact same thing, and then I thought your piece was great, and obviously a lot of other people did too because we actually got a bunch of shares. I threw it on Reddit. I think we got like about 200 uh, referral views from Reddit and uh, stuff like Dang. that too. So... But, I mean, how ridiculous was that? And this, and this goes back to the, the point of, of what I wrote, was what does that mean? I, that's, I don't see the relevance. I don't see the connection. I, I really don't think that the CFL is going to curl up and die, and I don't think it's an end for the Toronto Argonauts if an NFL franchise comes to Toronto. And for that matter, based on everything I've seen and heard, they're not coming to Toronto. As the yeah, the pro the product is too different. I just really don't. I honestly, back in the day, I actually thought differently because I didn't. I don't know. I guess maybe I didn't. I, I used to think that it would have been an issue. Like we're talking like 15 years ago when we're talking about this. Um, but the more I think about it, like the the product is too different. Um, I just don't really see a lot of people who are buying Argo seats and buying them because there's no NFL. Like, oh, I just really got to see live football. And if I can't have NFL, well, I'll just watch this. Like, I, it, it, I think the people that go to our games are the people that, I, other than the casual, like, one-off going to a game, right, see what it's like. Um, it's, it's people that love this league. Like, you can even see it on our Twitter feed. Like, when uh, you can even see, like, a, like a Friday night if I'm at home and I'm watching the game and I usually dial up our, our Twitter feed and just watch everything go by. And we're talking about, like, all these Argos fans that they're all watching the full, all, the, all the games in the league, right? They're all commenting on, like, the Ryder game or whatever. Like, it's just people that love this league. Um, and, and it, like, they're not going anywhere if the NFL comes. Like, they love the CFL. There's a reason they watch the CFL. And, they, and like I said, they watched... Um, games beyond the Argos. They, they love watching all games, you know? Um, and so I just really don't see a ton of people who are like, yeah, when the NFL comes, I'm totally bailing on the CFL. I just don't see it. I agree. And there's a there's a definitely a, an atmosphere, a different feel to an NFL game. The biggest factor on that is the tailgate experience. It creates a, a shared experience outside of the building. Uh, someone's going to correct me on this if they're actually watching. But the... But two might correct you. <laughs> Batu, check this out. Fact check. Okay. The uh, Ralph Wilson Stadium in yeah. Orchard Park, New York, where the Bills play. My understanding is that there's a, a county law or bylaw, an allowance, 
you're allowed to have open alcohol within a mile radius of the stadium three hours before and three hours after game time. Yep. So, because they've got that stadium in the middle of nowhere and all that parking, which doesn't exist anywhere in Toronto. If you did something like that, if, you can talk about how it wasn't the same experience with the Bills in Toronto because you couldn't tailgate. You couldn't sit in the, you know, you couldn't sit in your car drinking for three hours before the game. Well, you could have, but then you'd have to get on the TTC to come down to actually where the game was. Yeah. And you're not going to be able to create that experience in Toronto. But that, I know that I've, I've seen Buffalo, I haven't seen Buffalo game, but they've got the big parking lot, uh, Lambeau Field and Green Bay, huge area right there. Every outside shot of any NFL game you've ever been to or ever seen on TV has got just miles of concrete where people can congregate, walk around. I've had buddies that have gone to games, even cheering for the opposing team, raving about that tailgate experience, walking between the cars, knocking people, oh, we're going to get you guys, say, ah, oh, no, we're going to get you, ah, yeah. You know, and you're not going to see that in Toronto, aside from when you're standing in line to get into the building. So it's not that type of experience that you're not going to be able to create that at the Dome, period. Okay, <clears throat> do Torontonians really... If you get if you get the Toronto demo who we're not getting now, my my take is an unofficial sort of observance is that um, the typical season ticket holder for the Argos is a 905. Um, they live in the 905. They're probably older. They're white. Uh, you know, it's it's not the people I see on the street downtown. Like. I may be oversimplifying, and people can definitely correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to be that the, that is the demo who's coming out to the games now, who are like the diehards. Um, uh, dude, even look at the that Argo, uh, Friends of the Argonauts barbecue we went to, like, what, two weekends ago. Dude, it's like it's like 30-plus white people. Um, look at Toronto. <laughs> That's not Toronto. Especially Toronto downtown, especially Toronto in the core. Um, Toronto in the core is fairly young, um, I would say, you know, well-educated, definitely not all white. Um, and the Argos don't touch any of that crowd, like from what I see. Like, they just don't. And, you know, to me, I think that they have to – it's tough, but I think they have to get into that crowd. Like, and I'm not, I'm not saying I have the answer, but I think, like, that, that is the crowd they have to tap into. Um, and if that's the case, I don't know if those people give a shit about tailgating. I think those people just want to have, you know, like what we do, have a nice like pre and post game bar nearby, and and uh, you know, and and you know, maybe, maybe after the Argo game, but it ends at seven, go out to the go out to the bar, or go out to the club on or whatever. I mean, I don't know. Um, I, I really don't know if they're the tailgating crowd. I really don't think they are. So either like, yeah, you're right, and maybe the tailgating crowd is the ones we go after, and. I would argue that it's probably not people in the core of the city, um, and if that's the case, then is that is that a problem, or can the team just exist from people coming in from the outskirts, right? Um, but I, I just don't see tailgating meshing with like like the downtown core, like young urban person. But maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I don't know. I'm not I'm not an expert, but I just don't see it. I don't see it meshing as well. I see it meshing with sort of like the crowd that you have now, which I hate to say it is like an, a crowd that's not growing. So if you do bring in tailgating and all that stuff, I don't know if you're hitting that demo that we're missing. Or it's, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe 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 you don't go after that demo. Maybe you continue to go after who's still coming out, right? I mean, maybe you still go after, like, the... You know, I'm not trying to label anything, but the people from more on the outskirts and what have you, right? Um, but I think if you're going to go after the people in the core, which I would say you do because more and more people are moving into the core all the time. They're young people. They're educated people. Um, you know, you see companies, you read in the paper all the time, you see all these companies who are coming back to the core. Like Coca-Cola just moved their head office down the street from me you on know, King East here. Um, they just came from, like, I don't know, Markham or something. Why did they do it? And why did Telus just put their head office, like, down south of... Uh, uh, Air Canada Center, or like around there, they say it's because they want to be near the talent, right? The talent wants to live downtown. The talent doesn't want the shit commute. If that is the same demo that the Argos, I believe they don't have, and if it's a demo that they're trying to get, um, I don't know if like tailgating and like the big ass parking lot and being in Mississauga and all that stuff, I don't think that meshes. I don't know. And like I had this, I had this conversation briefly on Reddit on uh, on one of the threads uh, the other day, and he was like. You know, the guy was like, ah, oh, just put a 25,000-foot sta uh, seat stadium in Mississauga and just have a big-ass tailgating and problem solved. And I was kind of like, 
I mean, maybe I can't say it won't work, but I don't think you're growing. The, I don't think you're growing the fan base that way. I really don't. I think you're 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 reaching out to the to the old fan base, to the existing and the old. I don't think you're. I don't think you're. You're you know you're bringing in the new fan base. I don't know. I could be completely wrong. That's the way I see it here. Um, hey, look, someone's in my fridge. Hey, and someone just broke into my fridge. Um, <laughs> it's it's the cam. It's the after dark camera crew. <laughs> they're not. They're not. <laughs> Well, it is getting dark, dude. When we started this, I had sunlight coming in on my window, and now it's all dark. It's all crazy now. Um, I don't know. So, well, here's a counter argument. I don't know. That's that's my opinion. That that's how I see it. But I could be completely wrong. But I think that if, like I said, if, if that is the base that is going to take to um, to tap into like this new fan base, I don't think that meshes with the big ass parking lot and tailgating. I just don't. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Well, here's a counter argument for you then. Yeah. Remember what happened with Maple Leaf Square with the Raptors and Leafs playoff pushes. Yep. So that that was a, that was a young that was a younger crowd yep. and a large open air atmosphere with alcohol. Especially for especially for basketball, they 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 skew young. They got good young uh, loud fans. Right. So yep. me and me, and very and very uh, diverse, like uh, culturally diverse. Sure. Now I don't yep. think anybody's going to argue that basketball was more culturally diverse than football. That's that's a no brainer. Yeah. But is hockey? I don't then think hockey, is, I don't hockey, hockey more, is hockey more is a hockey crowd more diverse than a than a CFL football crowd? Mm. Yeah, it is. You think so? Every, everyone goes to Leaf games. I mean, you know, once well, well, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about the lower bowl. I'm talking about like yeah. the rest. <laughs> <laughs> the lower bowl is all is all whites and suits and cell phones. But you know, I'm talking about the yes. the, the regular folk. Yeah, but I'm wondering if a situation like that was created where it was an outdoor gathering place that didn't require an admission to get into and alcohol was being served. Yeah. But I'm talking about a bigger area than what they're trying to do on Bremer Drive for their for their pregame tailgate that the Argos are already working on. Would but, wouldn't the Argos, but wouldn't the Argos argue that's what they're doing right now inside of Gate 11? Well, that, but that's what I'd say is that you, because of where it's situated, it's kind of down, it's around the corner. What if this was a, a more wide-open space Again, like Maple Leaf Square is it's not really a fair example because it's right there at Union, but something along those lines where it was more walk-by traffic that may actually say, hey, what's going on over there? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe? It's tough. I, I don't know, man. Um, but I don't... Whoa, the color just totally changed on me. Am I like all crazy color now? Yes, it's freaking me out a bit. Whoa, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Wow, that's cool. Backlight, backlight. Wait, whoa, whoa. Okay, you're, you're about to give me a seizure here. Yeah, okay, hold on. Sorry. Just let me try and fix it. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Anyways, do you mind me being the yellow? I'll be yellow. That's the way it is. We need Batu to fill some time while I'm playing with the colors. Where's Batu? We need to fill some time. <laughs> Batu, tell me about these credit cards you need. So, Batu, how can we get in on your little scheme? Hmm, hmm. <laughs> we should have asked him, man. We might have been able to tap in. True. We Maybe could have, dude. I know LeBron here's did. what it is: we t we get a hold of Batu, we tap into his little scheme, which apparently just means logging into random Google Hangouts and asking for credit card numbers. But somehow, once you that equals profit, then we buy the Argos, and then we have that boat that goes across that we all just talked about. From year one of whenever that was, season ticket holders. When was that? Nine years ago. And we bring LeBron James to Toronto. <laughs> we bring Batu to Toronto, and we also bring Stempinski. Do you have an update oh, on Stempinski? Yes. Yes. Give me an update on Stempinski. I'm yellow, but we're sticking with the yellow. Sorry, buddy. I know it's freaky. <laughs> well, as long as it's consistent. It's when you were starting to switch there. It's... Okay, okay. All right, cool. I thought I smelled burnt toast for a second. Yeah, yeah. So how's, uh, what's the latest on Stempinski? I haven't seen him tweet anything in ages, man. Uh, now, Did you follow yeah, him? With, with Dury on the DL, we're not talking as much uh, AD3-2 either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a shame. Mm -hmm. But he has, um, I'm pretty sure he follows us, and he favorited a tweet that we mentioned him, and I think I even mentioned him without using the, like, uh, like the at Twitter or whatever Thing. Like I just right. mentioned, like his, like Stempinski, and he right. like favorited the tweet. I think so. I think he like actually looks at our feed. But hey, if I was like Joe, random guy 
playing golf at, in Chicago, go Bears, like, and some organization was obsessed with me, I'd, follow, I, I'd pay attention too. Yeah, some other country. I'm, I'm telling you, man, you're going to be all over Batu's website. <laughs> you're going to get so many African I'm, princes. When this is, when for this is done, I'm... When this is done, I'm <laughs> When this is done, I'm going back to look at the tape because I want to see what his background was. I want to know if that background was like just like a, like a, um, uh, like a, like an image that he put behind him, or whether he really is like like that, like he was sitting on his porch, like in somewhere. <laughs> no, but wasn't it like a crazy background? It was like in the, like he was in the Middle East or something. Like it was crazy. I gotta look at the tape again. It looked like a wartime correspondent on like CNN. Yeah. Like I was. But it, it could have. But he could have been, dude. He could have been at uh, in his basement in Stewart Hall, which is some crazy background. <laughs> full circle, buddy. Full circle. No, he wasn't. He wasn't dressed right. First, there's no. He didn't. He wasn't wearing the red blacks third jersey. Right. He was. He was underdressed for Stewart Hall. <laughs> okay. I gotta look that up. I gotta find out where it is. Is this like? Is this like Duro or what is this? Well, it's, it's just outside Keene. It's like a suburb of Keene. And Keen is Cavan, yeah, or no? Uh, no, other way, I think. Okay, I don't know. Dude, it's been too long. <laughs> okay, what were we doing before my color changed and we got off track? We were talking. Oh, we were, about... uh, we were talking about Argos and uh, future fans and the demo oh, and all yeah, that. I was like, I did, I did a big rant on the demo. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't have an answer, but I, um, like I said, this guy was talking about you know 25,000 seat stadium in Mississauga with the big ass parking lot. Everyone can tailgate, everyone get to it, yay, okay. But my argument was, I don't think we're reaching out to the up and coming like urban Toronto um, fan, and like by doing that, I think we're completely eliminating those people, um, and I think that's a mistake because I think that's the future, but. If you say that's the future, um, it's a hard demo to crack. There's no question. Uh, but if that's the one you're going after, that's not the solution, I think. But um, mm. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm biased. I live downtown, so I'm biased, right? I mean, but uh, that that's what I see. I think I think for this team to to survive like long term, I think they have to. I'm sorry, but they got to be beyond the like 30 plus white person um, demo. Like, I, it's it's got to be something else. I think. I don't know. Well, but they, how do you do that? I mean, I don't they got to get him in the door. I mean, like we weren't huge Argos fans for that very first game, but we had a great time, which well, started. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say that. I, I watched CFL as a kid. Okay. I just never. I wasn't a huge Argos fan then. Really? Yeah. So the day I said, "Hey, do you want to go to the Argos games?" Like you're just like, "Ah, I'll just do it for something to do." It's like, yeah, sure. What the hell? Let's check it out. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, cool. Yeah, it was. I, I got the time, of course, diehard Leaf fan, uh, and I was riding high on my on the Pittsburgh Steelers there with the NFL because they were putting together a pretty decent squad, and so I was like, oh sure. I mean, you know, I pretended to play football in high school. I'll go watch. Yeah, I'll see what's like. And then I, I had a great time. And so then we started the dialogue to say, I wonder how much season tickets cost. Those are really affordable. Let's see how close we can get to the to the uprights in the end zone. Bing, bang, boom. Nine years later. We're 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 talk we're still talking Argos. Yeah. So uh, to me, it's about just trying to get them in the building. If you get them in the door, they'll probably have a good time. But you know what? But you know what we've seen year after year after year is that when they actually do get a good crowd, the team stinks. That's true. And when the team stinks, people leave early, and the and nobody's cheering because there's none to cheer about, and people are just like, "I'm never going back." I hate to say, but we got a horrible record when like there's actually the people in the stands. You're right. And I don't know why that is. I mean, are they used to playing in a, a library? And it's like, oh, shit, now I can actually hear stuff. I, I don't know how to play anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, except for the Grey Cup where you actually saw yeah. them, like, buy into it. And the crowd was behind them, and they were fired right up. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a totally different situation there. Yeah. Hey, bet two. We got bet two. Oh, my oh, God. Ryan. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, <laughs> bet two is back. But his that name is, is Ryan. Oh, buddy. Buddy, welcome back. I just see added sync. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, man. Hey, do you got any credit card numbers? <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> no, I, no. No. 
Hey, Bill, I told you I need production god, not credit god. Yes. Okay. Production, production gods? Yeah, I need production gods. Production cards or gods? Production oh. god, yes. Oh, uh, I think we're going to get a little... Oh, uh, Betu, take it away, buddy. Play us a little ditto, please. Hey, Bill. What's up? Do you ever ask yourself, what the mean is it life? Life means it. What do you mean is it life? All the time. Why don't you tell us? Well, I always ask the question. I never have the answer. You want to be dead. Little chili peps, little chili peps. I need a, I feel like I need a lighter. Hey, Argos. Yeah. Let's talk about sex. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, huh? Oh, shit. Okay. Hi, Argos. So, tell yeah. us we your sex experiment. Oh, jeez. I'll tell you about this time, me and Bill, back in the day in high school. Oh, it was crazy, man. <laughs> we just got back from, uh, we just got back from Copperfields Thursday nights, like $2 drinks craziness. They would hit up the old pita pit. And after that, man, I don't even know I don't even remember what the rest that happened, but you've just told me it was incredible. That's all I remember. Hey I got uh, by the way, uh do you know why uh I'm asking you this question? I don't know, no, I don't know why. Because of you are looking like Johnny Sins. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who he said, but uh, our buddy Kyra thought so, that was funny. Hey, don't you know Johnny Sins? He's a very famous porn star. Yeah, yeah. People, people tell me that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious, dude. Oh. But too, yeah, you don't yeah, understand, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm like walking down I, the street, and pe people are I, saying that all the time to me. You don't understand. Why do you think we're on this? Why do you, that too? Why do you think we have Argos End Zone After Dark, buddy? It's all about that. That's the whole thing about Argos End Zone After Dark. That kind of stuff. I swear, I believe you. Okay, keep calm, Argos. Okay. Okay. So, and uh, Argos is your, your real name. Promo stuff to get more people Argos. out. Argos. Uh, yeah, Argos is my, is my real name and my favorite football team. It's weird. It's just What's a weird thing. My parents, Argos. my dad, my dad loved the Argos, and so he named me Argos. It was crazy. Whoa, really? Yeah, man. Oh, oh, oh my god. I know, I know. Hey, Bill. It's, it's freaking me out how much he looks like Bradwell. Hello. Ah, <laughs> uh, Bill. Do you know Dill No Brian? No. Oh my god, I'm believing you. <laughs> Don't know him. Is he, is he from Stuart Hall? <laughs> what do you say? Is he from Stuart Hall? I guess I don't know. He, he don't know. looks like Brad. Hey, ba hey mm -hmm. Bad too. How do you do your hair, man? How do you get your hair like that? What? How do you how do you get your hair the way it is? It's beautiful. Yes, yeah, fucking beautiful. Go I away. Know. <laughs> <laughs> do a search for Mike Bradwell. I'm telling you, you look exactly like him. It's freaking me out. Okay. <laughs> I forgot what we were talking about before our friend Bad Two came back. Oh, uh, we were hey, trying. Argos, to Argos, do you like? What do you think about old women's, old girls, old women's? Sure. You like me? <laughs> I'm gonna get something to drink. I'll be back in a second. Oh, sure. You leave me here with bad too? Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> That's all right. We'll just talk hair. Wait, we'll wait. I will. I will come back. I.
Yeah. We'll be going to drink a, a Coca Cola. <laughs> Where? Oh yeah, yeah. Bill's got to get a Coca Cola. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Batu. <laughs> Wait a minute. So we got Bill Lagon and we got Batu gone, and that was just me and uh, my friend uh, Ky Kyra hanging out. How's it going, buddy? Come on, man. Oh my God. What do you think about the What do you think about the Argos game tonight? Argos. Oh, there we go. Look, little product promotion. Little pro my product spot. Was frozen. Bro, Look dude. <laughs> dude, what did you do? Frozen. Oh man. Look like my dick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> but now we got to put a parental advisory on our broadcast. This is my secret, brother. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because of I'm lamer. I hear you, buddy. I hear you. Hey, Bill, where are you? Yeah, where's Bill? So, hey, uh, I bet you, did you get any of those credit card numbers? I'm not dues. No, no, not, not mine. No, no, you didn't get mine. You're right. What do you do with them once you get them? Nothing. Sorry? Nothing. You buy like hair product? Yes. Oops. Oh, well that makes sense. GB, yeah. we figured it out. Oh, oh, he's drinking Coke too. This is like I think this is honestly I just think it's like Coke bringing guys into our spitcher too, like <laughs> a product product placement. I think these guys work for Coke, Juby. Sure, Coke these, and smile. These guys work for Coke. They're both drinking at the same time. This is just one of those crazy social media just these guys work in the social media team for Coke. And the only requirement was, you know how to drink Coke and you have good hair. And Batu... How old are you? Right away, hired, hired, hired on the spot. So, what did I miss? Uh, how old are you? Well, Batu, Batu uh, went to get some Coke while you got a Coke. And, uh, and uh, uh, it was frozen. It was frozen. It was a big no, moment. Kara did not want to say anything. But, uh, you know what, I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna get back to the uh, the Argos here. Hold on, hold on. Dude, what are you doing? All right, all right. Now we're back. What are we talking? We we're talking about something serious. Oh, we're at the. Hold on. We're trying to solve the attendance issue. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I don't. I apologize. I don't remember what we said last. But uh, <laughs> sorry, just bad too. I mean, his buddy. Bad. <laughs> Dude, this is like name this time. This is like worth tuning in right now. People yeah, don't want to listen to us ramble. They just want to see like the kind of shit that the kind of people that pop in. He had a different name this time. That's what threw me off. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> so, anyways, so you you get off the couch, you go get a drink, and then he leaves, and he goes, he goes, he goes, I'm gonna get a drink, and then it's just me and the guy. It's just me and the guy who doesn't talk. <laughs> the guy with the microphone. <laughs> It was just me. No, it's just me and the other guy, like the 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 other dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just me and him, and he doesn't say anything. I'm just basically talking to myself, and then and then uh, and then the other dude comes back, and his coke bottle is like frozen. Which sucks. Yeah. Sorry, that's the worst. When you're thirsty and you grab that, and it's frozen. Yeah, no. But then he made some. Uh, he tried to do the old crude jokes about. Uh, he used he put the bottle in certain places and said some things. But anyways, that's the way it is. Stewart Hall. That's the way it is in Stewart Hall. <laughs> okay. Do All we have right. anything else to talk about? What are we? I don't know. What, what else are we talking that's about? Off that. I feel like this is going downhill, but unless you got some, what else do we got? What do I got? Anyway, so, so the attendance thing. Do you have any big solutions? Do you think <laughs> I'm wrong in what I'm saying, or do you think it's? I don't well, know. I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying you're wrong. I just don't know what the answer is. I, I, I don't. I'm, I honestly I don't think tailgating is the answer. For Toronto crowd, I, I, I really, really don't. don't think that Toronto's just not a football city. Uh, so I think I think it was Clay that was mentioning it. And I don't want to steal too much of his thunder because I know he's working on that article. Yep. But I think he was the one that was saying that when you look at, when you look at the cities that are successful, like you know Hamilton, Winnipeg, Edmonton, Saskatchewan, these blue collar towns. And Toronto is always known as a white collar town, so maybe a game like baseball is better suited, in an, in an over exaggeration and an oversimplification, but maybe something like baseball—it's that more casual and passively involved. 
is yeah. more the speed of a white collar town compared to a blue collar sport like football. And it, yeah, I think so. Um, and also, people are like, "Oh, well, back in the '70s, like even my dad says, he's, oh, back in the '70s, the Argos would sell at Exhibition Stadium, all this stuff." But so two things on that: one, there's way more, um, there's way more even sports options in the city. It's like back in the day when think when the Argos were drawing, the Jays didn't even exist, right? Were the Jays like what, 75, 76? I don't 77. know. 77. Okay, there you go. So when the, I think when people talk about the Argos heydays, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it's mostly pre pre Jays, but I don't know. So the Jays come in. I, my understanding is back in the day it was only it was Leafs in the winter, Argos in the summer. And back then Toronto's a different town than it is now. So for sports, you got two options. So now we get you got the Blue Jays who have like a gazillion games at home, and you have uh, uh, the Raptors. Obviously a different demo, but you got the Raptors. You got even stuff like lacrosse and stuff. I don't know if that matters, but but also too like Toronto's yeah. a different town, man. Lacrosse like, matters. It's our national sport, Fred. Lacrosse matters. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> no, no. Hey. Hey, dude. No, no. I'm not, actually, I used to have rock season tickets. I did. I used to I enjoy it. That. I remember I used that. To enjoy, I used to really enjoy it. I used to remember them playing. They played at the Maple Leaf Gardens. And that was back in the day, I think, before NLL like kind of really became like a, a professional type league. And like you would watch them at Maple Leaf Gardens and um, like this was back, I think, before half the rules were probably in the game because guys were just getting killed out there. And and like the sponsors along the boards were like, there was no beer company. There's no there's no any big sponsor name that you would know from typical sports sponsorship. It was like the, <laughs> the one that me and my buddy remember was like the boards, like the sponsors on the boards was like Cheez-Its. Like Cheez-Its, Cheez-Its was a big sponsor. <laughs> they were. They were. This is Maple Leaf Gardens back in the day when they played there. And like, and it was very, um, it was all, like, even, like, Molson Canadian wouldn't wouldn't sponsor. Like, a big beer company wasn't even in it. It was, like, it was pretty old school. Like, it was pretty, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't really, like, a high-end league, right? And I think now, I think, that I'm assuming the rules have changed. Like, guys aren't getting destroyed out there anymore. And obviously, the sponsors came with that, and the crowds came with that, right? Anyways, I got sidetracked. Uh, but, so, the two things. Um, uh, more, there's more sports and options in Toronto now than back in the day. Um, but also, Toronto's a different city now than back in the day, right? Toronto's, Toronto's a very different city now, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. I, it's it's tough. They're in a tough spot. There's no question, right? And it's a shame because it's a great game. But And I think, like, people all say, oh, the CFL has to have a team in Toronto. And you know what? They probably do. I would agree. Uh, it's... <sighs> With no disrespect to our friends out west, it's the. Geez, can we still call it the economic center of the of the country? I'm not sure if we can anymore. Uh, no, it's it's a financial center, but I think economic. You might even go to Alberta. I think I think I think Canada survived the economic downturn because of uh, all the oil and stuff, right? So. Mm -hmm. Financial hub for sure. Communications hub for sure. Uh, like in terms of just like. Driving the economy? I don't know. Right. Yeah. I, I suppose from a population perspective, with it being the most populous city center in the country, that it would be really strange to have to be without a team. And also too, like even just population wise, it's like, geez, you got way more people to draw from. And you're still True. I mean, you know what I mean? Even from even just a numbers perspective. Yeah, that's a good point. And that, that's always the counter argument when people are saying there's so much more to do. Well, there's a lot of people. Yeah, um, I, I saw some other stuff on a uh, Twitter chatter too. Uh, this is like weeks and weeks ago. People were talking about like ticket prices. So ticket prices are keeping people away. And I and I and I'm I'm like, I don't think tickets were that bad. I mean, I'm just looking at what we pay. And obviously, we we sit in the end zones and we get them seasoned. So we pay like 18 bucks a game or 20 bucks a game, which is a joke. But um, when Paul when Paulie bought that ticket off Ticketmaster to sit by us this week, I think all in fees and everything, he paid like forty bucks for that ticket. Like because he paid probably paid like the Rogers Center fee and then the you know the well we probably pay that too. But and then the uh, like the Ticketmaster fee and ever I think it was like a thirty buck ticket plus like ten bucks in fees. That was like a forty dollars seat to sit in the end zone. And then I looked up some of the other seats like fifty yard line like. 100 level, or no, 200 level, I guess, is the most expensive. And, like, I think there are literally, like, $100 seats there. I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm not, I don't think I'll even pay 100 bucks to see the Argos. Well, one of our high school cohorts had mentioned that last year, that he was interested in taking his, his sons to go see a game, but that the, price, the ticket price was just ridiculous for what he was trying to make happen. So that probably plays a factor, but it's, 
it's also a situation where you're in some prime real estate that they got some bills to pay. Yeah, but I mean, it, yeah, right. So it's just really an argument of whether lower prices would equal volume and volume equals a more overall revenue. And I don't know, man, maybe someone over the last 10 years has tried that play and it never worked. I don't know. They've tried everything else. Yeah. it's. Uh, I like the uh, like the $10 tickets they're promoting on Twitter, though. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. And uh, that may have played a factor in that crowd on Wednesday. Or, sorry, Tuesday against Winnipeg. Um, okay. Here's another one that we talked about briefly at the pub uh, the other day. Uh, ever since they hired their or fired their VP of marketing, it seemed to be that the, the, the at least at least for me, I don't really listen to Toronto media or look at Toronto media that much, but it seemed to me that things kind of changed once they canned their VP of marketing. I'm not saying she's doing a shitty job. I really don't know. Um, obviously, there's no one in the seats, but I mean, it's a tough product. Um, but like all of a sudden I was seeing like the Argos like doing the weather on Global and I was seeing like these $10 like Twitter uh, ticket promotions and stuff like that. And it was like, it was almost like as soon as like the firing happened, all of a sudden all these ideas came out of the wall. Like, I don't know. I mean, were they just complacent for all these years? And all of a sudden, oh, we got rid of someone now. Let's bring the ideas out. Yeah, I, I have no idea. It's, it was, it was strange, but you're right. There was definitely something changed. So you, you wonder who's calling the shots now. Maybe, maybe is it, I can't say it's somebody with more connections because a friend of mine from university who was in, in a place of authority with a sports channel knew who she was even though he'd never met her and had known her for being involved in that community for quite some time. So... Unless the whoever's there now is really hustling, I don't know what's there, like where that change is coming from. Right. Anyways, I don't. Know, I just I put it this way. I just noticed a difference in terms of ideas and in terms of just places where you'd see the Argos that you normally wouldn't. And uh, you know, I don't know if it's I just woke up to seeing these things or whether they actually did make a change. My hunch is, you know, all of a sudden all these ideas came out, and uh, one may ask. Why weren't the ideas coming out earlier, right? Sure. I mean, honestly, like a like a ten dollar like ticket uh, Twitter like ticket promotion. I mean, you can tweet that out and and pay a couple bucks to have it show up in people's Twitter feeds for like you know it costs you like not that much, um, and just see what happens, right? I mean, you can pretty much ga gauge like instant success, like how many tickets you've sold and and whatever, and see if it really takes off. And I mean. Little things like that, especially online. Like I know I'm an online dork, but online, man, you can test stuff for like minimal amounts of money, and you can track everything, a lot of it, and uh, it's an easy way to just test little things without like having to do these like big like offline like media buys. Like you don't have to go buy a print ad and go through all the bullshit with that, and you don't have to like go buy a TV spot or a radio spot or any of that stuff. Like online, it's all you could do all these like self serve things like Google AdWords and like Twitter ads and like all these other things that you can just go on and literally only spend like five hundred bucks or less and just see what happens, right? I mean, it's worth testing this stuff. I, I mean I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying it work it would work for the Argos, but I mean with online it's it's a it's a medium that you can test for like minimal like minimal bits of money and a lot of times you can track a lot of it too because you track the click, you track what happens, right? I mean it's I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying it's the answer, but uh, I'm glad that I, well, when I saw that come through my feed, I thought it was a good call. I thought whoever whoever hooked that up, like the Twitter buy and all that stuff, I thought, I thought hey, they're they're rolling out some ideas now, right? I'm, I I thought it was a good call. Agreed. It, yeah. There's I don't see any downside. As I said, if you get them in the building, they're going to have a good time. So anything that gets more people in the building seems to make sense to me. I mean, it's turned into nine years and counting of going down the 115 to see all these home games. Yeah. Um, my take on the Dome, people hate the Dome. You know what? I got no beefs with the Dome. You just need enough people there. If they get 30,000 at the Dome, I say that it sounds great. If you get 50,000 there, it sounds amazing. We've been in both. Obviously, we've got a couple of great cups there. Uh, two or th what? Two. Two, right? We've seen? 2007 and 2012. There you go. Uh, 50,000. It's amazing in there. Um, I think we've been to Argo games. It must have been like Eastern Final or something where they had like 30 and it was electric. I thought it was fantastic. Um, but if you don't get close to 30, yeah, it's a little quiet. I mean, I still like the Dome. really. I really do. I still like it. But there's no question uh, you need a decent size for the fan experience to be one where you're like, wow, I'm really a part of something here, right? Yeah. 
that's the big thing. There's that crowd mentality. Or like, they call it a mob mentality, but if you get more people in there, you create more energy that everybody wants to be a part of. And that well, really they, factor in everybody's experience. Isn't that pretty much Blue Jays' uh, season opener? Every year, they sell yes. out because everybody knows there's going to be 50-plus thousand people in there, and everybody wants to go to that game. But game two at home, <laughs> we're, we're back to 25,000 or less. Right? Yep. It's a ridiculous. It's like this... I bet, like, I think that's totally it. I think it's exact. I don't think it's like, oh, I want to see the first game this year. I think it's, I know I'm going to go to, if I go to this game, I know it's going to be packed with people. Yeah, and the prop, I guess the, I was going to say, uh, imagine if they said, hey, the October 4th game is sold out. Make sure you get your tickets for October 11th. But then everybody would show up on the 4th, and the book would only be like 12,000 people, and everybody on social media, oh, here's your full crowd. <laughs> and then you know it just you know, blow it all there, but yeah, if you had a word of mouth campaign, I mean, a lot of people say that a winner, a winner or a contender will bring the crowds out, but the Argos won the Grey Cup in 2012, and they had one of their smallest crowds in like three years for their home opener the following year. So I think, yeah, I think a winning Argos team will give us better attendance, but it will not solve problems. Agreed. And like I said, I hate to say it, but there's been games where they, over the last, say, three years, where they've had a decent crowd, say 28,000, I don't know, whatever I'm guessing, right? I just remember, like, it was a good crowd. Like, we would sit there and go, wow, a good crowd tonight. And the Argos would just be horrible. And if those were first-time people, they'd be like, I'm never going back. Well, and, and now every and, sporting and it, event... Sorry, and it might not just be about the football. It's about that the crowd is so out of the game because the football's crap, right? They might not even be, like, really, like, football fans. They might even not care about, like, technically what's going on in the field. They just want to be a part of a crowd that's excited and making noise and all that stuff, right? Well, it becomes that shared experience. So if the team plays well, then that's the easy part. And we've talked about this before, that from a marketing perspective, an in-house promotion perspective, you don't have any control in the outcome on the field, aside from making noise when the defense is on and trying to get the offsides and such. But as a fan, we can't score a touchdown. But yep. if you create a great experience in that crowd, so you know, with the giveaways, the promos, the you know, interaction on the screen, try to create some type of event, some type of moment that someone takes home and says, I've got to go back to that to experience a moment like that again. I think that's the biggest challenge for any marketing or promotional team is that regardless of what happens on the field, you create something that people want to come back and experience again. Right. Especially for kids probably, right? Yeah. I mean, like, they're not holding the wallets, but I suppose that if it's the right type of memorable for the child so that the parent can enjoy it as well, they want to see that smile again, then maybe, right. that, yeah, maybe that's that connect. I don't know. Oh, but here's an... Here's another thing that has been noticeable, and actually I don't have a beef with it, to be honest. Um, I don't really care for this stuff, so for me they could have nothing and I wouldn't care less. But there's a definite difference between how many of those like in-game promo things they did when they had, remind me of her name? Faye? Uh, sorry, remind me of the name of the, uh, the promo woman that they had yeah, on the Faye. mic there. Sorry? Faye, F-A-Y-E, Faye. Yeah, 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 oh, there you go, Faye, sorry. So when Faye was doing it for those couple years, like, there was a lot more going on then than now. Like, like uh, the dude now, he just kind of, oh, he does the odd thing, but it's not really like before, right? And like I said, for myself, I could care less. They could have nobody, and I'd be fine. Like, I don't need that junk. Um, but, you no know. No offense, Drizzy. <laughs> but maybe some people, I mean, sorry, I, I'm not saying good or bad. I'm just saying that there was a different noticeable difference in that as well, where somebody made the conscious decision to say, you know what? We're not going to do as many of those things anymore either. Or they're like, we got no sponsors who want to do this stuff. So we guess we just scale it back. I don't know. I have no idea what the answer was, right? Or what the reason was, right? Without rehashing one of my favorite articles that I wrote for the site, I sent that letter to the you Argos. Write for the site? Hmm? You write for the site? Yeah, ArgosEnzone.com, yeah. I've, oh, I thought, I've, I've never seen you post on there. Uh-huh. So... <laughs> There was that letter I wrote a couple of years ago trying to get to their promote and their in-house promotion team and try to bring those two halves together. You know, as I was saying about creating that experience. If you could find... I'm going to use Pizza Pizza, pizza Pizza as an example because I know they've been a sponsor 
longer than we've been going to games. So instead of having the the box shuffle, what, so what is is it always number two now? Uh, honestly, I think now that it actually switches up. I think yeah, now it's not even the same every time, but for years it was always the same one. Once you figured it out after the first game, it was that for the rest of the year. This is true. But along yeah. those lines, let's say we drop the, the, the mystery box shuffle here. What if every time the opposing offense it has a false start or a time count violation, the fans get a free slice of pizza? Ooh. Okay. So that now you've created a, a moment where that crowd can get involved so that when you've got Shea Emery or Shane Horton here trying to get the crowd making up making noise and that crowd responds with noise, that causes the false start. So then you flash up at the big screen. Congratulations, Argos fans. There's a free slice of pizza for you. It's like, oh, wow, look, we get pizza. And then, so then the next time you do this, you're stand up making even more noise. Like, I'm not saying you're going to get a full, a full pie out of this. Although that'd be amazing, that like if you actually got twelve, got cost twelve of those penalties. <laughs> uh, if you create a, a situation where if you get a sponsor on board that's willing to, for lack of a better term, gamble on that type of promotion, where the fans get involved and it influences what's happening on the field, so it's actually interacting, where where as opposed to putting the noise meter on during the commercial before the Argos offense comes on the field. So what if it was something like that where they were trying to then again, you get that creative moment. So maybe on your way out of the dome, you stop by Pete's Pizza for your three free slices because your voice is, is hoarse from all the noise you made that influenced the play on the field. So then you've got all that coming together into a crazy shared moment. I love it. Do you think that, is, it, is there any chance that there's a rule in the CFL that you can't sort of incentivize noise? No, because they do that all the time, right? Uh, yeah, but they don't. They're not giving anything away. They're, they're just right. saying, "Oh, make noise." They're, they're not giving anything your, away. Your defense fans. So I mean, yeah. they do that anyways. It would just be a different type of promotion. I've never thought of that. It's a great idea, man. Yeah, I post. Don't you read the posts? I post yeah, that. But, no, no, I never. <laughs> but you just you used to have a beef, and I agree. You used to have a beef because they were doing the noise making things at the wrong time. But I never. I don't recall the like get free pizza thing. Was that in there? Well, I was using that just as a for instance. I mean, oh, like just something that would something that was involving with the sponsorship, that the fan interaction creating that that time count violation because the quarterback can't get the cadence out in the audible, that then feeds back and pays off the fans for that interaction beyond the five yard penalty. Something that's tangible, like like a slice of pizza or a dollar off of Tim Hortons or what whatever company you get on board with that then I they think that would be kind of an interesting way of approaching things that may create more interest, at the very least more involvement at the fan level of the games. So it actually works two ways, right? So it works that, um, that, that it, helps, it helps the defense, um, and it also works that people get something out of going to the games. This is a win-win all around from where I'm sitting. Yeah. But I never got a response and, to that. And, and if you can associate, and then it gets sort of like mentally, if you're associating these times with a the brand, then that's good for the brand, no? Yeah, I, I just as a, for, a quick for instance, Peterborough Pete's games. The uh, Pizza Hut used to sponsor this thing if the puck went into the crowd, and you caught that puck. You brought you bring the puck back to uh, guest services there at the at the at the Memorial Center, and they give you a coupon for a free slice of pizza. And That's all you get is a free slice. That's it. I can uh, okay. Maybe it was a personal pizza. I can't remember what exactly it was, but I can tell you that entire slogan thing. That they would throw every time they go the puck around. There goes another pizza, pizza Hut puck, and the crowd would go, "Who cares?" And they you know, say, "Pizza Hut cares." But again, it was that type of interaction that I guarantee you, if you bring that Folks, up, in, you pizza definitely season get your pizza season tickets now because that's the kind of stuff you can look forward to. Hey, See, another free pizza today. Another free pizza, pizza pizza puck. Who cares? <laughs> pizza, who cares? No, <laughs> I swear. Wait, wait, so who, I know who the who cares yeah, guys are. Into the crowd. You know who the, I know who the Who Cares guys are. They're those old guys that are in the standing room all the time, right? Those them. They were doing probably. that when I was a kid there, man. Those old guys. They'd probably, exactly. they, just sit there, they just sit there in the standing room and make stupid jokes. But, but at the same time, that's a situation. Every time I see a puck go into the crowd at any game, I kind of snicker and I think Pizza Hut. There you go. Um, actually, I like everything you just said. I think that's cool. Um, so didn't we, didn't we 
was it Sarah or somebody else who once told us, yeah, but it's too hard for them to do because like everything is everything. Well, for lack of a better term, scripted. Everything has a time. Like it's already pre-scripted in the game. Is like, oh, this at the whatever mark, we're gonna do the whatever promo. At this mark, we're gonna do the whatever promo. Um, and I think that was sort of like some kind of feedback that someone gave us that said, you know, it probably won't work because of that. But you know what? Make it work. Yeah, to me that doesn't sound very comp. Like I, under I totally understand in terms of the a lot of those in-house promotions. So, okay, so the first commercial break, we're going to do the bet365.net question, and then the second break, we'll do the pizza shuffle, and then we're, we're going to do that, that jib-jab video of the opposing players' heads on the third commercial break. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure that type of thing happens. But if we're talking about something that, you know, you don't even know what's coming, so that the you know we got you stand up make noise for your defense and that first time there's a false start or first count then it's real quick <laughs> bang just falls up on the jumbotron real quick you know free pizza for or you know free slice or whatever for that let's make more noise and get another one and then it's not about setting up a whole other promotion and trying to get somebody in terms for the photo op and the camera angles it's almost like it's almost like it's kind of like one of those things they sort of slide in it's not if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But if you got a spot for it, you throw it in, kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. I like it. Just a thought. Uh, I never heard. I never heard back from him on that ladder, though. Hey. Why write back to a season ticket holder of nine years? Um. Uh. Yeah, but the whole like I know the whole like making noise on a stupid promo when we're on offense. I know that just drives you nuts. Oh, painful. Just painful, and and this is a part of the education of the game, right? Trying to understand it's not about making noise all the time. Is there's certain key moments? It's it's closer to baseball in that sense because you can set it up, you can prep it, you know when it's coming. So if it, if there's a two strike count in in baseball, it's time to stand up and clap. If it's second and long and the defense starts doing this, it's time to get up and make some noise, rather rather than, you know. Rhythmic clapping when Rick Ray is trying to call cadence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think... You know what? I mean, we're sitting here... I know everybody online criticizes and stuff, and at the same time, I think it's probably worth mentioning that we don't know all the ins and outs of everything that goes takes place and, and how it takes place and all that, so obviously we don't know have all the answers because we don't know all the restrictions and all that stuff, but at the same time, I think there are ideas out there. So. Yeah. Well, along those lines, someone can explain to us why there's only ten game balls per game. <laughs> like, why is security going into the crowd to get a game ball? You talk about a moment. I wrote. Oh, I got yeah. a ball kick by Sweezy Waters. No. Nope, I wrote. No you don't. Here's a pla Here's a rubber plastic one. I don't remember. I don't know if you remember this, but I wrote a whole blog post like years ago before Argos Denzo existed, and I wrote it on the Sportaholic blog, and. It was, I think it was all around that. It was all about you're a kid going to your first game um, and you, you know, well, either you, your dad or your mom or whoever catches this football for you and it's your first game and you're like, you know, seven, eight years old and um, you're like, this is amazing. And then you take your football and you bring it to school the next day and everybody in your class is asking you, where'd you get that? How'd you get that? I'm like, I caught this at the Argo game. I thought, what at the Argo game? It's fun, man. I got this football. Like, and then everyone in their class is like, you know, I might be rich in a bit, but everyone in their class is kind of like, that sounds awesome. And then like, maybe they go home and they say, well, Dad, I want to go to the Argos game. Let's go to the Argos game. It sounds like a good time. I mean, I might be reaching a bit, but basically what I'm saying is that you create that sort of like personal experience for, even if it's like on a one-to-one -one basis, and especially if the person is a young person, um, that's huge, I think. Um, I think that's massive. And is it worth um, a couple of footballs? Yes, it is. Um, I don't know. I, I, think that, I, think, I think that they're miscalculating on that one. I understand there's expense and all that stuff. But um, that's totally one that I would, uh, um, you know, work on. Um, and I think, I believe when I wrote that blog post, it's like years ago, um, that someone from the Argos actually responded, and they wrote this big thing in the comments and I think a lot of it was basically, um, we only have 10 footballs. <laughs> yeah, that does sound familiar. That, I don't think that was a random <laughs> number I picked. I, I think I remember reading that. And yeah. It's, it's kind of like, like we can't do anything because they only give us 10. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it's really more of a league issue than an Argos issue, I think. Sure. But I, I got a hunch that doesn't ha- that happens at the other stadiums, too, because if they're only allowed 10, then they're going to be going into the stands getting every single one of those balls. No, no, yeah, I think it's league-wide. I think it, I think it is. I mean, it, yeah, I think it is, but... Yeah. So what do they do? Okay, so what do they do if the players score a TD and toss it into the crowd? I mean, I mean they don't take those back. So, so couldn't so couldn't, so couldn't you get like? Do they? I don't think they do. I think if the players yeah, toss it in, they don't. No, really? no. If they throw the ball into the crowd, security comes and gets it. Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I thought that was like a keeper. You no. If the ball leaves the field of play, goes in the, into the stands, security will come and get it. That's even worse. Unless you run like hell. Yeah. Or, or if you got a guy like Paul who solves these things for his friends. Yeah. We, we've been on our best behavior this year, though, because we didn't have our in-house lawyer right beside us. It's true. It's not, it hasn't so. been the same. We miss you, Paul. Hurry back, man. We miss you, Paul. All right. Uh, do you have anything to add, Juver? I think we've gone through. I think we've probably been talking for like three hours, so this is ridiculously sure. longer than I ever thought. I actually thought we'd be talking for 10 minutes when we had ideas. We're a little over two hours. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> oh, well, part of that was bad, too. So, you know, he helps. Uh, Middle East Bradwell. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Good to meet you. All right. So, I don't know. I enjoyed this. Um, I think maybe we try it again, and hopefully we have more people in on the call because, I mean, I like talking to you, but more people would be better, too. So, uh, but yeah, we, we've see, had uh, these conversations before. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, well, it, it's funny because, like, this is what we do at pre- and post-game, right? Well, more in pre-game because it's usually just a couple of us. But uh, this is basically pre-game, right? So. Yeah, it's a, I, well, I mean, I saw you with a Coors, but uh, I mean, I I just got water right now. Well, you got to work on that. Uh, yes, I do. So, yeah, I mean, we'll uh, we'll try it again. Hopefully, get more people uh, um, like sign in and and uh, and joining us. I don't even know if people have Google Plus accounts or Gmail accounts or whatever, but that's a bit of a restriction. But whatever. And uh, anyways, but I'll I'll post it on the blog once it's all done and whatever, and maybe people will watch it uh, non-live. Uh, although, it's a really long thing. I probably wouldn't sit through it myself, but anyways. We may have to kind of chop this up into chapters. I'm not, no, no. Like, like I'm, not chop, I'm not chopping anything. All I'm, doing is, all I'm doing is putting a link to the parts where Bad 2 comes and then comes again. That's it. Hey, that, that's what the people want. I think my favorite part of the whole evening actually has been when you went for a drink and then Batu went for a drink and you left me with the guy who doesn't talk. <laughs> Dude, you gotta check You gotta check you gotta check the video. Like it's like I try to like engage him and he just sits there. I'm like, shit, what do I do now? <laughs> the two most talkative guys are gone. <laughs> I couldn't even hear what he was trying to say to anybody. Every yeah, once in a while, know. he would pop up on my screen with, with the mic there, and I have no idea what he said. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else, Juber? It's everything from this end. Okay, cool. I'm going to shut her down, and uh, we'll see if this thing actually recorded anything and whatever. But good chatting. I think we oh, went through like a gazillion items. <laughs> nice. Cool. All right, bud. Take care. Uh, when's the next game? Oh, you caught me flat-footed. Okay, I don't know. Soon. Wait, oh, just sh- 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 wait, wait. Hold on. Oh, Monday, September 1st, week from Monday. It's the Labor Day Classic at Hamilton. Hmm. Holiday weekend, okay. Yo. Okay, we'll see. We'll see if, we'll see if, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see if I'm available, you're available, whatever. All right, bud. Take care. I know you got to head off to Stuart Hall tonight. You got to like a square dance or something. So enjoy that. I got nothing to wear, buddy. That's all the way they all. That's jackets. the way they all do it there, man. All four of my flannel jackets are the dry cleaners. Well, I got nothing. I tried to think of something. I got nothing. On that I'm note, I'm gonna start with my brother-in-law. Is he from there? Well, he's from Keene. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. All right, bud, take care. I'm going to shut her down. See you. See you, bud.